Saturday, November 7th, 1970, Stanford Stadium, Palo Alto, California, where the Huskies of Washington, led by Sonny Sixkiller, the nation's leading passer, meet the Stanford Indians and their superstar Jim Plunkett, who has gained more yards than anyone in the history of college football. College Football Today is brought to you by the American Telephone and Telegraph Company and your local Bell Company. And by Colt 45 Malt Liquor, a completely unique experience. And with the Sierra Nevada Mountains in the background, we are in Palo Alto, California, for an important Pacific 8 battle between 6th ranked Stanford. They are undefeated in Pacific 8 play, and they are going against a much improved Washington Husky team that has played the role of spoiler already this year. Sixth ranked Stanford with their Heisman Trophy candidate at quarterback Jim Plunkett. And for the Washington Huskies, they have two great quarterbacks as we anticipate a crowd of 70,000 fans here on an overcast afternoon in the Bay Area. And Bud Wilkinson and I are always pleased to come back to the San Francisco area, and especially, Bud, when you have Plunkett quarterbacking Stanford, six killer, and Collins for Washington. Well, Plunkett uh, is the leading offensive player in the history of the NCAA, and in analyzing him, uh, physically, he's 6'3", he's 203 pounds, he's strong, he throws all types of passes, he can close line it or he can hang it out in the air and let them run under it. The other thing I believe, however, that makes him a super quarterback is his ability to read the defense and check signals at the line of scrimmage, but even more important, after the ball is snapped, to read the movement of the defense. Uh, he's truly a great player. However, surprisingly, the number one passer in the country is Sonny Sixkiller of the University of Washington. He's been troubled this week by stomach flu. He won't start today. His place will be taken by Greg Collins. Collins was the number one quarterback uh, for Washington. This is Sonny Sixkiller, number six, as you can see on the screen, uh, the nation's leading passer. As I mentioned, he's had a problem with stomach flu this past week. He will not start this afternoon. Uh, Greg Collins will start. Collins played ahead of Sixkiller in spring practice, but then had a broken collarbone in the spring game. However, he's a very capable player. He came off the bench last week when the score was 15-7 to in favor of Oregon well, and led the Huskies to victory. And, of course, Bud, one, one thing that has made the country strong is the nature of the melting pot. Uh, here we have Plunkett of Mexican ancestry and uh, Sonny Sixkiller, a full-blooded Cherokee Indian originally from Oklahoma. That's correct. Uh, there's Collins, uh, as you can see in the background, getting ready to throw the ball. And believe me, the ball will be in the air this afternoon. These two teams rely on their passing attack to set up the runs. That's somewhat unusual in college football. The majority of college teams go with the runs to set up the passes. Okay, bud, we'll return to Palo Alto for a look at the Washington offense in just a minute. When you're born in a small town and raised in the fields, you learn fast to cherish the good times, the memories, because there aren't many. But there comes a day when you've had enough. You say your fare thee wells, and you travel on. Hike the hundred highways Never found a home Still and all I'm happy Reason is you see Love's been good to me Stevie Wonder and George Goebel join Johnny Wednesday night. But the Washington Husky offense is averaging nearly 30 points a game, and they have piled up a lot of yardage passing. Well, they have uh, great throwing, as we mentioned a moment ago, and also great receivers. Uh, Creed, their wide receiver, is almost a twin of the Taha, the great uh, receiver of Stanford from the standpoint of his physical capabilities. Bayard, the other wide receiver, is excellent, and the blocking of the Washington backs uh, has been exceptional, which, of course, gives the passer plenty of time to deliver the ball, and that's going to be one of the key things today how well Washington is able to protect their passer because the part of the Stanford team, in addition to Plunkett, has been the excellent pass rush. Well, let's see how that Washington offense operates, and especially when Sonny Sixkiller 
uh, one of the two sophomore quarterbacks, uh, is throwing the ball. Well, they throw from all types of patterns, as I think these plays will indicate. This is Washington in the dark jerseys. Six killer on the bootleg. And he's hitting number 83, Krieg. He's wide open on the play on a crossing pattern. This is a rollout. And six killer again finds Krieg open on the three yard line. This is a play pass. Six killer setting in the pocket and this time finding Brady who was wide open in the end zone. This is the drop back pattern. That's four different designs of the offensive play setting up the pass opportunity and you saw those slick moves by number 92 Bayard. And this is the sprint out pass which is the basic play I believe in the Washington offense and you can tell here that Cornell believes in driving for that goal line. And probably today, Bud, we'll see uh, Cornell carrying the ball more than he'll be catching the ball. Uh, blocking and carrying. Uh, they use the draw play to balance up their passes. And the draw play, of course, works when the line rushes. And then the linebackers are dropping back to protect the passer. You can see the linebackers were all out of the play here as Cornell broke through. Let's watch the draw play again. You can see him read the de defensive line as they rush, then go to the outside. And the linebackers are all back downfield trying to play pass. And there's a great deal of daylight. He takes it very well. All right, we'll return in a minute to talk with Jim Plunkett about the Stanford offense following this message. Data phone data sets enable computers to talk to each other over regular telephone lines. Now the Bell system has a new data phone service that will save a lot of businesses a lot of money. The data phone 113A is an economy model that costs about half as much as the model that preceded it, under $12 a month. This new model is very basic, but most of the business community only need a very basic set, one where they can call the computer and the computer can answer back. That means it's ideal for the thousands of businesses that share time on a computer, since all they really need is a basic data phone. Putting it simply, this new data phone service is going to fit the needs of a large percentage of the business community and save those companies a lot of money at the same time. The American Telephone and Telegraph Company and your local Bell Company keep looking for new ways to help your business. This time by letting you talk to your computer at a much lower price. Stanford's quarterback Jim Plunkett from nearby San Jose certainly knows how to earn his way because you see Jim's parents both blind. His father passed away in 1969. His mother is still sightless. So growing up, Jim had to work as a gas station attendant and many other things which has made him quite a guy. Jim, between seasons and prior to the start of your current campaign, there was a great deal of talk that you might quit college football and play for pay. But I know you had some good reasons why you didn't make that decision. Uh, yes, and a few of them were that uh, I wanted to go to the Rose Bowl. I wanted to lead a team to the Rose Bowl and play in it. It's, uh, it's kind of been a dream here at Sanford for many years, and uh, I definitely wanted to do that. And uh, I also wanted to set an example for younger kids and uh, have them stay in school and uh, show them that education is very important. Well, very good reasons why college athletics are so important, Jim. You went into the season, you and Archie Manning as the prime contenders for the Heisman Trophy, which means that there's been a lot of pressure. You're sort of a marked man once you step on the field and the game gets underway. Uh, very oftentimes you feel that way. Uh, they, they want us, uh, fortunately, our game plan is usually a passing attack and they want to stop that uh, quarterback from getting having time to drop back and throw the pass. And so uh, everywhere you go sometimes, there are things you hear from other teams that they're going to stop the quarterback, they're going to stop me, and they're not going to let us let me get off a pass. And uh, sometimes you're just... And being a uh, quarterback, you oftentimes are a mark man. And of course, Jim, no quarterback can set the NCAA record and many other records without a great receiving core. And here at Stanford, you have some fabulous ones like uh, Rabbit Vataha, whom we're going to see in just a moment. He is sensational, isn't he? He certainly is. He's a very fine receiver. He can do many things, and he can do them all well. I think he's a great athlete. This one uh, against Washington State for 96 yards was a fine play by him. The ball was in the zone. He came back, grabbed it, and ran all the way. And he was, he's was he been doing that all year long. 96 yards. And for Jim Plunkett, he became the NCAA total offense record setter. Now, here's Bob Moore, a man you throw too often. 
uh, quite often. He's an excellent tight end. He blocks well and he catches the ball extremely well. He used to be a running back, and once he catches that ball, he knows what to do with it, like here against SC, getting into the end zone after being hit a few times. Uh, he uh, comes up with those big plays. Number 86, Bob Moore, whom I'm sure we'll see a lot of today. Uh, he certainly will. There it is again against uh, SC, coming up with another clutch catch. And this is against Washington State, a long gainer. He said he would be open, and he was, and he did a uh, real fine catch on the ball. And Jack Lasker, here against Arkansas, did a real fine job getting open and catching the score against Arkansas. And uh, a good offense, of course, has its uh, share of strong and fast running backs. And Stanford has Shockley and Brown, pretty special too, aren't they? They certainly are. They've contributed quite a bit to keeping teams, so to speak, honest. They, uh, they're they extremely strong on, the, on, on our, our part of the running game. And uh, Hillary Shockley is an excellent fullback. He's not only big, but he's very quick. And uh, they can both score, I think, from anywhere on the field once given that ball. Which, of course, then uh, gives a lot of credit to your head coach, John Ralston, and his coaching staff. Let's uh, get a look at Shockley. Uh, we saw this on ABC in our very first telecast against Arkansas. Uh, that's uh, Hillary Shockley off tackle, and uh, the rest he does all on his own with a few good blocks thrown downfield. He weaves and cuts back and forth and breaks tackles because he wants to get in the end zone very badly, and he does a, an excellent job. And when it isn't Shockley, it's Brown. It certainly is. That's Jackie against uh, Washington State going for long yardage and a score and he, he's got all the equipment to be uh, uh, an All-American. Well Jim, a victory or a tie here today against Washington and you are in the Rose Bowl. Your offensive plans must be pretty special. Uh, they certainly are. We're, very, we're a very determined team, especially tomorrow, and uh, I don't think anything is going to deny us from the victory. Jim, you know, uh, Bud and I uh, enjoy and have to be objective when we do telecasts, but sometimes it's fun to get subjective. So the Southland Corporation and their 7-Eleven stores asked me prior to the season to come out with a magazine book that would pick the All-High School, the All-America, All-Pro, and then in each of the three categories to pick a player of the year. And I think in the college division, it wasn't that tough because I picked you way last spring, and so I'm pleased to uh, present you this first player of the year medallion that was struck by uh, Bill Lowe from the Dallas Arts in New York City. And I hope, Jim, that this leads to many other awards, uh, yes, even the Heisman Trophy. Thank you very much. We'll return following this message. commonplace occurrences of day-to-day -day living. One thing stands out as a completely unique experience. Colt 45 malt liquor. Well, we're minutes away from the start of an exciting Pacific 8 battle. And Bud, what are the keys to victory? Well, it will certainly be an upset, of course, if uh, Washington wins the game. To do so, the Huskies need to do three things. First, they need to protect their own passer. Secondly, prevent the long gainer from Stanford. We'll keep track of the plays that Stanford makes that go further than 15 yards. And above all, the real key is how many times can they intercept Jim Plunkett. The Washington Huskies, coached by a former pupil of Bud, Jim Owens, and Stanford coached by equally competent John Ralston. And Stanford hopes to win to go to the Rose Bowl. Uh, January 1st. From Stanford Stadium in Palo Alto, California, this has been College Football Today. This is Chris Schenkel along with Bud Wilkinson inviting you to stay tuned now for NCAA College Football. Today's game features the Huskies of Washington against the Stanford Indians. The young lawyers defend those who can't defend themselves Monday nights on ABC.
college football, 1970, the year of the quarterback. All the excitement and color exclusively on ABC. NCAA College Football. In today's game, two of the nation's outstanding quarterbacks, Sonny Sixkiller of Washington, will meet the Stanford Indians and Jim Plunkett. This ABC Sports exclusive is brought to you by Chevrolet and Chevrolet dealers who are now featuring Impala as the car of the week on the game of the week. By America's railroads. Who needs them? You do. We all do. By DuPont Xerex, Anti-Leak Anti-Freeze. Anti-Leak Xerex is the antifreeze that won't run out on you. And by ABC's Wide World of Sports, which spans the globe to bring you a constant variety of sports. Share the thrill of victory every Saturday afternoon. Our ABC color cameras are in Northern California with the Sierra Nevadas in the background. We come into Stanford Stadium, and this is where the Indians play, and today they are hosting the Huskies of Washington. The Stanford Indians, undefeated in Pacific 8 play with a victory today or a tie, assure themselves of the conference championship and a trip to the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. The Washington cheerleaders are here. They're looking for another victory as the vastly improved Huskies coached by Jim Owen possess two extraordinary sophomore quarterbacks, Collins and Sixkiller. And of course, for Stanford, it'll be Jim Plunkett. Fred Wilkinson with the opportunity to uh, assure themselves a Rose Bowl trip with a winner tie today. Uh, this must be tremendous pressure for college football players. Well, I think college football players feel the pressure all of the time, but uh, when you have battled all season long with the thought in mind, let's win the championship, let's go to the Rose Bowl, and you have it almost within your grasp, I have to agree with you, Chris, that the tension rises a little bit higher than normal. And but these two teams, Stanford fourth in the nation and Washington fifth in total yards passing, which means one thing, that our game today should be thrilling. Well, the Washington defense uh, is leading the Pacific Coast Conference in pass defense. Uh, last week, uh, they did a remarkable job against the University of Oregon. Oregon is the leading passing team in the country. Washington held them to eight completions in 43 attempts and made three interceptions. Another interesting point, I believe, about the defense of uh, Washington is that uh, Michigan was held to only one first down in the first half, and that occurred two minutes before the half when they played the Huskies earlier in the year. So it's a stout defense. Now let's go to Chris for the player introductions. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's meet the offensive team of the Washington Huskies. A tight end from Tacoma, Washington, number 85, Ace Bulger. At left tackle from Huntington Beach, California, number 72, Dan Cunningham. At left guard from Seattle, number 77, Ernie Janet. At center from Seattle, number 53, Bruce Jarvis. At right guard, number 65, Wayne Sortoon. At right tackle from Longview, Washington, number 76, Lane Ranabom. At split in from San Francisco, number 92, Ralph Bayard. At quarterback from Torrance, California, number 15, Greg Collins. At right halfback from Ventura, number 41, Daryl Downey. At fullback from Seattle, the offensive captain, number 32, Bo Cornell. At flanker back from Tonawanda, New York, number 83, Jim Krieg. The defensive co-captain from La Mirada, California, number 91, Tom Fela. And here's the head coach in his 14th year, Jim Owens. And now the defensive starting lineup for the Stanford Indians. At left tackle from Hollister, California, number 76, Dave Tipton. At left guard from Billings, Montana, number 78, Pete Lasetich. At right guard from Lakewood, California, number 73, Larry Butler. At right tackle from Long Beach, number 91, Greg Sampson. The left linebacker from Glendora, number 87, Ron Katzel. The middle linebacker from Martinez, California, number 52, Phil Satry. The right linebacker from Garden Grove, number 50, Mike Simone. At left halfback from Houston, Texas, number 21, Charles McLeod. 
At right halfback from Richmond, California, number 29, Benny Barnes. The free safety from Millbrae, California, number 23, Jim Kaufman. The strong safety from South Pasadena, number 44, co-captain Jack Schultz. And at quarterback from San Jose, number 16, co-captain Jim Plunkett. And in his eighth year as head coach at Stanford, Johnny Ralston. The pregame activities have been concluded and we'll be back for the opening kickoff here at Stanford Stadium in Palo Alto, California. The 1970 college football season is reaching its peak, and the battle is on for number one. ABC Sports will bring you the climactic games in two exciting weeks of NCAA football. November 21st has to be a great day for college football fans with two tough battles on the schedule. Top-ranked Ohio State will be out for revenge for last year's upset by Michigan, but the Wolverines want to repeat this victory scene. And at night, UCLA will be looking to even the score with USC. During the week on Thanksgiving night, powerful independents Houston and Florida meet in Tampa. In a second thrilling doubleheader on November 28th, the classic Army-Navy game followed by the National Wild Card Game, which will feature two of the nation's top teams in pursuit of the national championship. For the best in college football, watch ABC. And here at Stanford Stadium, the Indians have lost the toss. In fact, in the first seven games, they have won it only once, and that was last week. So the Huskies have elected, following the toss win, to receive. So it will be Washington in the white jerseys, the purple trim, uh, gold helmets, gold football pants, going against, undefeated in the Pacific 8, the Stanford Indians. Steve Horowitz will be the kickoff man for Stanford, number 56. He'll be teeing the ball up at the 40-yard line. And probably back deep will be Jim Cree, who has a fantastic average when it comes to returning kickoffs. And Bud Wilkinson said seldom that uh, you'll get such an average, nearly 29 yards. Well, Creek is a boy that has great balance, amazing speed, and a sense of timing on kick returns. If you're all, all out all of the time, the blockers don't have a chance to form for you. You have to read the blocks, pick the openings as they occur, and then accelerate with the speed that he has. And that's Creek uh, going back now to his position. He's the wide receiver in the Husky offense. Number 83, Krieg, and there are some 70,000 fans watching this game at Stanford Stadium on an overcast afternoon with a temperature 61 degrees, very little wind. Herman Houston, number 21, is also deep, awaiting Horowitz's kick, Steve Horowitz of Beverly Hills, California. And here's the boot. It is Krieg at the 5, the 10, the 15, the 20, the 25. He is going to keep his average and then some. Krieg making a nice move. Ninety-five or ninety-six yards with the opening kickoff, and it's a touchdown. It was Bell that we have to credit for helping to delay the would-be tackler. Ninety-five or ninety-six yards. Jim Krieg, whom we told you about, and now you're looking at number 16. That is Wisbowski, who has yet to fail on a point after or a field goal attempt this year. So let's see what he'll do now. The holder is Larry Worley. The kick is up, and it is good. Dramatic suddenness. After 13 seconds of play, a 95-yard return. Here it is again. Watch Creek as he catches the ball here. Wait for the blocking to form. A big hole opens up. Now he accelerates as he sees the daylight, but watch him use his downfield blockers here, weaving in and out and allowing the blockers to come in to work for him, and he goes into the end zone untouched. Let's take another look at it from a little bit different angle. You can see that he got finely timed blocks by floating a little bit. There he's slowing down again, changes hands with the ball, weaves inside to set the block up, then comes back to the outside, and his superior speed at this point takes it all the way into the end zone, but he gets a very fine block from Bell to ensure it. 
And all this took only 13 seconds. The start of the game, Eric Cross is number 40, and number 32 is Reggie Sanderson. And we'll have the kick coming from the Washington uh, kicker, Ron Volbrecht. And there he is. It is 7 to nothing. As Wisbowski kicked his 25th consecutive point after, and there's the boy that scored the touchdown. Now the kick following it. That is Reggie Sanderson for the Stanford Indians and uh, gets a fine return. The kick was a little short. It comes out to about the 36-yard line. It's not just football. During the last academic year, Pacific 8 conference teams won a record seven national championships in basketball, track and field, tennis, volleyball, water polo, rowing, and baseball. An amazing record. And there you look at the starting lineups offensively. Led by Heisman Trophy candidate Jim Plunkett from the 36-yard line with the pressure on him, trailing by seven points. Lassiter to the near side of the field. In the slot is Vataha. Plunkett, a very, very quick pass. Good for about five yards to number 86, the senior from Klamath Falls, Oregon, Bob Moore. Stanford will use a little bit different offensive pattern. Uh, prior to this game, Lassiter has been wide receiver on one side of the field, Vataha on the other. About four-fifths of the time this afternoon, Vataha will be in the slot. That's to put him man for man against the inside safeties that they do not feel are quite as capable defenders as the cornermen for the University of Washington. With the ball at the 41, it's a second down and five for Jim Plunkett, number 16. Vataha is number 18. The setbacks are Brown, 33, and Shockley, 38. <laughs> Hillary Shockley. Shockley getting a fine block from tiny Randy Vataha. And for the first time, Stanford is in Washington territory at about the 40-yard line as Cal Jones makes the tackle. This is the option play. Plunkett, a great passer, but also a very deft ball handler, making the lateral beautifully. Shockley turning upfield. Wide open. Fine block here by Vataha. Good for 19 yards, a first down at the Washington 40. Jim Plunkett calling signals. Lassiter to the far side. Down the middle to Vataha from Garden Grove, California, number 18. He's 5 feet 10. He was covered by Bill Cahill of the Huskies, number 18 in the white jersey, and number 12, Mark McMahon. So to come back, second down and 10, as Washington leads 7 to nothing. On the opening kickoff from Stanford, Jim Krieg went 95 yards for a touchdown. Wisbowski successful with the extra point. Second down and 10 for Plunkett. And Plunkett using his uh, nimble footwork and his size to go inside the 30 where Jim Katsinas, along with Gordy Gwen, make the tackle. Ball now resting, let's call it the 27-yard line, bud. The Washington defense is concentrating on rushing Plunkett on the passes. They're committing, trying to shoot the gaps along the line of scrimmage inside. That gives you blocking angles to the outside and sets up the option play. First and 10 on a Plunkett first down. From the 27 now, the Indians. Lassiter to the left, along with the Taha in the slot. And the Husky defense quickly in on Jackie Brown, coming from his left halfback position. Gordy Gwynn, a native of the state of Washington, and Katsinas from Oakland, Illinois, along with the middle linebacker, Ron Shepard, on the tackle. These are the little princesses uh, who are out here who will be seen more at halftime along with the incomparable Leland Stanford marching band right here in Palo Alto. There is Plunkett. Second in total offense in the nation, seventh in passing offense on the current year. Second down, and let's call it 10 from the 27. Here's Plunkett. Beautiful strike to Vataha. Rabbit Vataha, forced out by number 18, Bill Cahill, and let's view it again in slow motion. Vataha is in the slot position. Lassiter is wide. Vataha will take the outside break here as Lassiter drove Burmeister back. Man for man coverage. Vataha is open. Number 18, Cahill pursuing him and knocking him out of bounds. Plunkett now has thrown three times. He has completed two for 16 yards. 
On the ground, he has picked up a first down with a 10-yard scramble. Now first and 10 at the 16. Washington leading 7 to nothing. Lassiter to the near side along with Fataha. And Jackie Brown has it. Brown from Yakima, Washington. He's a junior, 6'2", 200 pounds, and there you see Stanford's opponents. Their only blemish, an upset, and a big one by the Purdue Boilermakers in their fourth game. In the Pacific 8, they are undefeated. Their record overall is 7-1. and one. They are sixth ranked in the nation. And a victory today or a tie will put them into the Rose Bowl for the first time since the year 1952. Now from the 10-yard line, second down and four. Lassiter to the near side, but Taha again, just outside the tackle on the right side of the Stanford line. And Shockley putting his head down and getting closer. Rick Huguet in on the play for the Washington defense. He's in at the linebacker position as Jim Owens, the Washington coach, is alternating some players. There you see third down. And with the ball, let's call it the seven, bud. It's a little less than a yard. And uh, Kurt Mater came in at defensive end for Washington. He's one of the tallest men in the field, 6'7". Bataha is a flanker all along to the near side of the field. Let's see if the uh, play had been blown dead as the ball was carried by Shockley prior to it squirting loose. That was a third down as Kurt Matter of Longview, California, helped on the play. And now we have an official's time. It appears that we're having a measurement now. Walter O'Done is the referee, the umpire Tom Butler. Headlinesman Raymond Curry, he and his crew working hard now. Field judge John Daniels. Look at this. Look at that. Well, it pays to be sure. All right. That's wonderful. I have to pat that referee on the back. He got right down there with it. Right down there in good old earth, bud. As Stanford now has its fourth first down with a first and goal to go at about the six. This is a drive that began at the Stanford 36-yard line. Up comes the 10th play in this drive, and Stanford, Jim Plunkett, trailing 7 to nothing as the opening kickoff was returned 95 yards by Jim Krieg for a Washington TD. From the 6th, first and goal. And there you have it. J Jim Plunkett to Jackie Brown. Plunkett's 13th touchdown passing this year, and what a super player. 64 yards, 10 plays, and it's now Washington 7, Stanford 6, and the point after will tie it up. Steve Horowitz of Beverly Hills, California, number 25, Steve Murray, is holding. Horowitz, number 56. The kick is up and good. Timeout at Stanford Stadium in Palo Alto, California, where the score is Washington 7, Stanford 7. The changes in the new car you buy today must be meaningful and important. They must be like the changes you'll find in the 1971 Chevrolet Impala. Changes that we feel make it the most car of its kind your dollar can buy. For example, you want it more quiet, so the Impala now has a double layer of steel in the roof, with the inner panel perforated much like acoustical tile to absorb sound. There's a brand new power ventilation system that keeps air moving even when your car isn't. You wanted a smoother ride. The Impala now has a longer wheelbase. There's a bigger windshield, so the whole road opens up in front of you. And for better stopping, you now get powered disc brakes at no extra cost. The 1971 Chevrolet Impala changed top to bottom, front to back, for only one reason, to put you first. Impala, car of the week at your Chevy dealers. And the Stanford Red, the Indian Steve Horowitz, ready to kick off following a touchdown pass from Jim Plunkett to Jackie Brown. And with the point after, we have a tied ball game as we've had two touchdowns scored in three minutes and two seconds. The opening kickoff, 95-yard return by Jim Creek for Washington. And then Plunkett 
coached by John Ralston, at whom we're looking, in one of the most methodical 64-yard, 10-play drives we've ever seen, bud. Did a great job of reading the defense along the line of scrimmage. Uh, Washington was expecting more passes than Plunkett threw. They were trying to be in tight, and the two option plays that Plunkett ran really burned them and set up the passes. Now, if you were Horowitz, you'd probably want to kick away from number 83, Jim Krieg, who returned the last kick, 95 yards for a TD. For Washington, there's a fine athlete. Horowitz's kick is more or less down the middle, but it's going to be Krieg. He's out to the 10 now. Ooh. Hit hard at about the 29-yard line. So now we get a look at Washington for the first time from scrimmage as Moore makes the tackle, bud. He almost broke it, Chris. Uh, it was the same kickoff return that uh, he went all the way on in the opening play of the game, but we had one missed block. Now coming to the near side of the field, Bayard, number 92. Jim Krieg, number 83, is opposite from the 28-yard line. Greg Collins, the sophomore, starting the game at quarterback. And Bo Cornell, who has the number one rusher for Washington and the number one scorer, carried on the play as Lazatich, joined by Larry Butler. Here's the offensive group. They are at split end, as you see. Then the tackles and guards and the tight end, John Brady, with Greg Collins starting in the place of Sonny Sixkiller with uh, Darrell, Cornell, and Krieg. Krieg the flanker. So the advance is out to the 21-yard 20, line. Second down and seven for Washington. Collins to Downey. Number 41 for Washington, Darrell Downey as Lasetich makes the tackle just across the 25-yard line. Washington does an excellent job of slowing up the pass rush by using the draw play as their basic running play and also using the screen passes in the manner of the last play. You can see the Washington record here. This is a team that can put points on the board. Third down. And about a yard for Washington. Downey and Cornell are the setbacks behind Collins. There's Collins. Oh, the man, Ralph Bayard, had beaten the deep defender on the play, Benny Barnes of Richmond, California. So it brings up a fourth down and one for the Washington Huskies. That play indicates how much they came to win. They had an almost sure first down if they had used a running play, but they were going for the six points. Let's take a look at it again. You can see how wide open he is. He's well, well past everyone. The strategy worked, but the execution of the play was faulty. Now the first punt of the ball game. Nick Galuska kicking it for Washington. Back deep, we have Eric Cross, number 40. Oh, he's got a little hole. And there was a six-point saving tackle by number 46, Galuska, who punted the ball 42 yards. It's a 21-yard return. There's Eric Cross, number 40. Next Saturday on ABC NCAA Regional College Football, the Buckeyes of Ohio State, who are led by Rex Kern, a great quarterback, take on the upset-minded Boilermakers of Purdue. And for those of you in the mountain areas, we have an exciting game of regional interest, Utah versus Arizona State. Now... At the, let's call it the 48-yard line of Washington, Jim Plunkett back at work. Lassiter left along with Mataha. What a passer. Mataha. And the defender tried for the interception, but the pass was thrown like a bullet and got to Mataha in a hurry. Let's take a look at it again. You can see Vataha is the inside receiver in the slot position. As Lassiter goes deep, he comes to the outside. Bill Cahill plays for the interception here. You'll see him come in, driving for the ball. He thought he could pick it off, and of course, if he had picked it off, it had been six points for Washington. The pass was beautifully thrown, however, and Stanford has first down on the, about the 15-yard line. San Jose's Jim Plunkett now. First and ten from the Washington 15. Lassiter and Vataha to this side now. And mixing up the plays, Shockley, a philosophy major here at Stanford, falls down at about the 12. Rick Huguet makes his second tackle in a row. Might repeat that the Stanford offensive formation is different than any they've used so far this year. They, Vataha has usually been a wide receiver. By playing him in the slot, 
they have him going man for man against the inside safeties rather than the corner men. John Sandy ready to snap the ball. Second down and seven at the 12 for Stanford. Game is tied. Seven all. 8.46 remaining in the first quarter. That way. For two or three yards. Right in the front of one of our ABC cameramen, as you see. Cahill and McMahon forcing number 38. Shockley out of bounds. He's the number two rusher and the number four receiver, a native of Los Angeles, California. Shockley now five carries, 29 yards. The ball is at the nine, a gain of three, third down on four. 8-17, first quarter, score tied 7-7. Lassiter and Vataha are at the top of your screen. Third and four. A bullet, and what a catch by Lassiter. Wow, we... 48 yards and four plays, and but the way Stanford's playing today, they could beat anybody. The bucket is certainly showing very dramatically how he became the leading offensive player in the history of college football. It is 13 to 7 with eight minutes and two seconds remaining in the first quarter. Horowitz ready to try his second point after with Murray holding. It is up. Good. Well, in a matter of about three minutes, we've had two touchdowns by Stanford. We have an offside against Washington, and needless to say, it'll be declined. ABC and the NCAA combined to bring you all the thrills of college football with timeout. The score, Stanford 14, Washington 7. We return to our studios for this message. Fresh air. I love the taste of it. And fresh air is what makes Maryland 100s taste like no other menthol cigarette. Maryland tobacco's fresh air cured. Other cigarettes contain some heat-treated tobacco. Tobacco dried in heated barns for only six days. But Maryland 100s, 100% 100 fresh air cured for up to eight long lazy weeks. Fresh air cured tobaccos that taste cool with menthol. New Maryland menthol. When you get close to people, do your teeth still look their whitest? Does your breath still seem its freshest? Be sure with new close-up, the toothpaste and mouthwash in one. Clear red close-up has two whiteners that get teeth whiter than the toothpaste most people use and a real mouthwash. So it not only gets your breath close-up fresh, it also gets your teeth close-up white. Close-up is for close-ups. This is the Washington Husky receiving unit because Jim Plunkett has thrown his second touchdown passes after about seven minutes of play. This one to Lassiter. He has thrown six times, completing five for 64 yards and the two touchdowns as Horowitz now will kick from left to right as Stanford leads 14 to seven with 8.02 remaining in the first quarter. And the threat, Jim Krieg, number 83, is at the bottom right of your screen. Herman Houston is also deep along with Krieg. Horowitz now ready to move the ball. Here's the kick. And it's taken by number 32, Bo Cornell. And Cornell, one of the setbacks for the offensive unit of Washington, is stopped by Hall of Stanford at the 25-yard line. Let's watch the touchdown pass play, and you can see here what a quarterback undergoes. Plunkett faking the off-tackle play, setting, waiting, coolly moving up, and then in the face of a terrific rush and a hard, hard blow, throwing the perfect strike for the touchdown. Greg Collins is the Washington quarterback. Second time they've had it from scrimmage. Last time they had the punt as 41 Downey. Tries to get outside on the aggressive Stanford defense to little avail. Greg Sampson, number 91, one of the uh, Stanford players in, in a hurry. Along with Jack Schultz, the co-captain. And you see Washington alternating players. Uh, but they're sending in defensive calls. Defensive and offensive, both. All right. From both benches. Right. Getting it from both sides now. Jim Owens, the coach of Washington, does it with his defensive units as well as offense. And here's Collins. 
Second and nine, and Cornell is tackled by Santry, number 52. Just watch Santry, the middle linebacker here for Stanford. Playing a man-for-man -man fast defense. Turning on the speed to get to the outside. Cornell tried to pivot, but Satry did not take the fake. Made a clean tackle. Now it's a third down and seven for Washington and White with the purple numerals and the gold helmets. Third and seven from their own 28. Creek to the far side. Collins. Good job of running by Collins. Let's see, did he get beyond that forward stake on the far side of the field? That is the question of the moment for the Husky fans. It is a first down for Washington. Their initial one of the ball game as we look at number 15, Greg Collins. Uh, Washington has picked up a total of about 26 yards. Stanford 112 as we look at scores of other Important teams, Notre Dame beating Pittsburgh, 46-14. Ohio State, these are the ranked teams. Defeating Wisconsin, 24-7. And next week we'll have Ohio State against Purdue from West Lafayette, Indiana. More of the ranked teams and their scores. Nebraska in the third quarter leading Iowa State, 27-11. And now fifth-ranked Michigan shutting out Illinois, 42 to nothing, And it won't be long before... Ohio State and Michigan will be meeting and will be televising that game as Arkansas wins again over Rice, 33-14. to Arkansas, eighth ranked. Now we have a second down and about eight. Collins is the quarterback for Washington from the 37-yard line. A bullet intercepted by number 44, Jack Schultz. Jack Schultz, the co-captain, has intercepted the first pass of the afternoon, intercepting Collins of Washington. So that means that Jim Plunkett and the Stanford Indians have terrific field position at the Washington 34, Schultz's third interception of the year. 14-7 to seven the score with 5.20 remaining in the first quarter. Plunkett is number 16. Shockley and Brown set behind him. Mataha and Lassiter to the near side. And Plunkett at 6'3", 204, keeps it. And he gets uh, not a very friendly greeting on the part of Gordy Gwynn along with Kurt Matter. Now the ball is at the 27-yard line. It's a second down and three as Plunkett now has carried the ball twice, 21 yards. He has thrown two touchdown passes. We're in the first quarter. Second and three, Stanford. 43 Lassiter, 18 Bataha at the bottom of your screen. Jackie Brown for no gain. Tom Fela. And as you see, Jim Plunkett needs 198 yards for NCAA career passing record. He holds the total offense record for the NCAA. And this is a mark that Jim would like to erase before the season's over that's held by Steve Ramsey. Right now, though, he's more concerned with this play. And what a play. Third touchdown by Plunkett to Moore. Bob Moore. Let's take a look at it again on the isolated camera. Moore is the tight end, but you can see that he split off a little bit this time. It's a swing fake in the backfield. The rotation of the Washington defensive secondary was too slow. Moore was wide open going the flag route for the touchdown. And now Steve Horowitz. That's Prince Lightfoot, the Indian mascot here at Stanford. Horowitz trying for his third point after it's up and good. Time out at Stanford Stadium in Palo Alto, California. The score, Stanford 21, Washington 7. America's railroads. Who needs them? 
The man who has a special on cantaloupes this week. The man who builds a house you can buy without going to the poorhouse. The lady who prices her glassware so it doesn't break you. All the businesses you do business with. Where would most of them be without railroads to deliver the goods at the lowest cost? Out of business. America without railroads, we can't afford that. But if railroads are just allowed to do business like any other business, with up-to-date regulations and fair taxation, then they'll always deliver the goods. America's railroads, who needs them? You do, we all do. Ladies and gentlemen, in seven minutes, the Stanford Indians have scored three times on three touchdown passes thrown by their All-American Jim Plunkett. And they lead Washington 21 to 7. It'll be Horowitz, number 56, kicking off again as we have four minutes and five sec three seconds rather, remaining in the first quarter. Washington got its touchdown as Jim Krieg went 95 yards with the opening kickoff to score. Since then, though, it has been all Stanford. Here in the Cardinal Red jerseys as we have Houston with the ball at the 6, the 10, the 15. Krieg blocking. Finds a little hole. But is brought down by number 93, a defensive tackle named Cowan for Stanford. Bud? I think we should point out that this Washington team uh, has been behind. They know adversity. They were behind 21 to nothing against both California and Southern California. Came back in both of those games to lose only by three points in each contest. They also were behind Oregon State 14 to nothing and came on to win. Sonny Six Killer has just entered the game. Sonny Six Killer, the full-blooded Cherokee Indian. There he is, number six. He leads the nation in forward passing. He's been tremendous. He, like Collins, a sophomore. He is from Ashland, Oregon. Now from the 23, first down. He's been bothered with a severe chest cold all week. And it's obvious that he doesn't mind contact. Sonny Six Killer. Well, uh, as we're speaking to you from Palo Alto, we're happy to welcome the southern region following the LSU-Alabama game and a regional telecast to this telecast. Quickly, Washington took the opening kickoff, friends. 95 yards to score. Then in seven minutes, Jim Plunkett and the Stanford Indians have scored three touchdowns, all on passes by the Heisman Trophy candidate. Now it's a second down and five from about the 28 for Sonny Sixkiller of Washington. Beautiful pass by Six Killer. Bayard, number 92, caught it, bud, and all his credentials, uh, well, we can see why he's done so well. He made a great move also. He was rushed on the play. Let's take a look at it on the isolated camera. This is Bayard, split wide, going against McLeod of Stanford. A little fake out, fake in. Six Killer was rushed, but threw it for the completion. With about three minutes remaining in the first quarter, it's the first time Washington has been in Stanford territory from the 38, first and 10. Cornell carried on the play for the Huskies and Ron Kedzil makes the stop right at the line of scrimmage where it'll be second down and 10 from the 38. A 29-yard pass play, six killer, Picks up a first down. Is at the 38 now, second and 10. All right, Washington and White with the purple trim. Stanford in the Cardinal Red jerseys here in Palo Alto. That is Downey. Downey on a second and 10. Well, he uh, gains about five yards on the play. And uh, right now, we're going to uh, take leave for you Southern uh, fans and rejoin Dave Diles and the scoreboard show will continue uh, Bud Palmer is there too and we hope you enjoyed this little insert live and in color from Palo Alto, California third down and five now for Sonny Six Killer who has Jim Creed to the far side Cornell and Downey are the setbacks big play for Washington 
and it's good to the 21 yard line and a Husky first down. Here's a team that's averaged nearly 30 points a game. Let's take a look at that one again. Number 87, Brady coming off the line of scrimmage from his tight end position on a rollout pass by a six killer. He drills this one in there. Six killer now has thrown twice. He's completed two for 45 yards. Originally from Oklahoma, six killer has Baird to the near side, number 92, and Krieg 83 opposite. And that's Bo Cornell. Cornell, the number one rusher, averaging three and a half yards per carry as he is tackled by Kaufman. There you see Jim Owens sending in the play with number 65, Sartoon. There are the stats of the nation's leading passer, Sonny Sixkiller, completing 58% coming into the game. Now with the ball at the 15, it's a second down and four. Stanford leads by a score of 21 to 7 with 42 seconds remaining in the first quarter. What a game. <laughs> Cornell putting that head down. Getting a fine block from the left tackle, Dan Cunningham, number 72. And the ball is at the 9. Gain of 6, so that means it's first and goal to go. And now the real test for the Stanford defense. The patterns of both offenses are remarkably similar from a standpoint of tactics. Uh, both lines trying to rush the passer are shooting the inside gaps and opening up the off-tackle and outside running plays. All right, look at this. A straight T formation. We don't see that too often on the part of Washington. First and goal from the nine. Downey. And Downey is within two yards of a touchdown as Barnes, number 29, Forces him out of bounds. So it'll be a second down and goal, bud. And once again, the wide play against the defensive pattern of shooting the inside gaps. Okay, it's 21 to 7. Stanford leading with 11 seconds remaining in the first quarter in this big Pacific 8 battle. Stanford with a victory or tie today assures himself of a conference championship and a Rose Bowl bid. Getting from the straight tee. Second and goal. Six killer, the quarterback. Cornell into a big heap of Indians. Four seconds, three seconds. Time running out now in the first quarter here in Palo Alto. We have a timeout. Here as it's the end of the first quarter, the score, Stanford 21, Washington 7. We drive home a point about anti-leak Z-Rex antifreeze. It stops most common radiator leaks just like that. We guarantee it will stop and prevent leaks in your car radiator for a full year or just write DuPont and get your money back. Anti-leak Z-Rex antifreeze is guaranteed not to run out on you. You cut yourself like that before the big dive. Tomorrow you'll draw sharks. Sharks? Use Edge Protective Shave. I use this. Call that protective? Edge is a gel. This gel lubricates better than that foam. You get a smooth shave? Yeah. I hardly cut myself anymore. It's that lubrication, I guess. No nicks and no cuts. And no sharks. Edge Protective Shave. And there you get a look, bud, and ladies and gentlemen, of the condition of the field after some rain yesterday and earlier today. The other end of the field where Washington was prior to the change of goals with a quarter is in much better shape. It's much drier. They're the only wet spot in the field is the goal line where they now are after the change of goals at the quarter. It could be a sort of a tough break for Washington. And now Sonny Sixkiller would like to end a 77 offensive push. Third down and goal. Fourth down coming up. Herman Houston, number 21, carrying on the play. Jim Kaufman, Charlie McLeod of Houston, Texas. Uh, very alert for Stanford. Watch the Stanford defense shoot the gap here. It's the sweet play. You can see the three full house back men for Washington leading, but the inside penetration is successful. And Washington has stopped one yard from the goal line. Bell is in the lineup, and now Cornell returns 
Number 21 is out, Houston, and it's a fourth and goal from about the one. Washington with the ball. This is the 11th play of the drive. Six killer. Touchdown. John Brady, the tight end. And there is a very happy pass catcher. John Brady, the tight end, and a perfect strike from Sonny Six Killer, bud. He's about as cool and confident a looking passer as I've seen. And uh, this young man, as you've mentioned, is only a sophomore. Well, he gets that from uh, his heritage, the first Americans, bud. I guess so. So we have a 21-13 ball game as Washington fights right back. Wisbowski going for 26 straight. He makes it. He hasn't missed a kick all year, including three field goals. Let's watch the touchdown again. It's an off-tackle fake, beautifully carried out. There's the reach for number 32, Cornell, six killer, setting up, drilling the ball in, and the tight end is wide, wide open on the play. Excellent call, but tremendously effective execution. But as you pointed out in the pregame show and, and at the start of this game, with the great quarterbacks, uh, we're bound. We've had four touchdown passes thrown already. I didn't expect to put the points on the board quite this fast. You can see the first quarter statistics. Offensive plays about even. Stanford uh, leading in total yardage. Uh, the statistics don't show the 95-yard kickoff return by Washington. Ball possession, interestingly enough. Washington, possession of the ball, 8 minutes and 23 seconds in the first quarter. Stanford, 6 minutes and 37 seconds. Washington with 18 plays. Stanford with 17, which means a total of 35 in the first quarter, and that's why we keep so much busier doing college football than the play-for-play -play ranks. Fulbrecht's kick, taken by a very tenacious Stanford Indian named Hall, number 80. Let's pause five st seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. Watch your level, Jerry. You got that headset on. This is the fourth possession, Chris, by Stanford on their first three possessions. They have moved it for a score. Lasseter goes to the far side of the field. Vataha is in the slot. Jim Plunkett, who has thrown three touchdown passes, has Brown and Shockley behind him. Taking that ball in his hip. Throwing long. Lassiter was going up for it. So was Cal Jones, number 26, a tremendous sophomore cornerback for Coach Jim Owens. There he is, Jones. And that pass was thrown about 55 yards in the air. Now Plunkett is 6 of 8 for a total of 91 yards. One of the amazing statistics about Plunkett is that he was trapped only 10 times in his freshman and sophomore years. This season he's been trapped 7 times, but 5 of those were against Purdue. Stanford does a remarkable job of protecting him. Second and 10 now at the 33 for Jim Plunkett and Stanford. It's 21-14. 13.58 left in the first half. And keeping it on the ground, it was Jackie Brown who tried to move forward. Perhaps uh, did a yard as Loveland of Portland, Oregon, number 88. Cute girl, right? Stanford on the last play came very close to violating the 25-second time limit between plays. The referee will drop his hand when the ball is ready for play. So now here is a third down play. It's the third that Plunkett has had thus far in the ballgame. Third and ten from the 33. Let's see if he, what he does with it. The marker goes down. He is being chased. Throwing. And Bataha comes down with the ball. At the 42-yard line of Washington, but let's watch the call on the penalty by the referee, Walter O'Done. Cal Jones made the tackle. It's a procedure call against the Stanford Indians. Let's look at it again in slow motion, the last play. There was a procedure penalty, but you can see Plunkett dropping back. You can see Vataha making an inside fake, then moving to the outside. Plunkett is rushed. He's got to use his superior speed to get to the outside. Vataha sees that he is running, so Vataha sort of 
free breaks the uh, pattern himself and moves down the field much more deeply and comes back to the inside, goes up like a basketball player, getting a rebound to make the reception. So with a five-yard penalty, the ball is now at the 28. Third down and 15. 13-10 left in the first half, 21-14. to Stanford leading Washington. Lassiter and Vataha to the far side. Here's Plunkett, number 16. And four open. But a beautiful defensive play by number 11, Burmeister. Tipping the ball. Otherwise, Moore had a gone for a TD. Let's look at it again on the isolated camera. This is Moore, split out a little bit from his tight end position. A great post pattern. Burmeister comes across and, as Chris mentioned, got his hands on the ball to prevent the touchdown. So it'll be the first Stanford punt. We have Steve Murray deep, averaging about 35 yards a kick. Cal Jones and Bill Cahill are awaiting the punt on a day that's very calm here near the Pacific Ocean. It's hanging up in the air now. And it's taken by Cal Jones at the 31. Spinning around to approximately the 39. A good effort. Lassiter, 43. Offensive end or flanker back making the stop. This is NCAA College Football with timeout to score. Stanford 21, Washington 14. Well, that's it, everybody. Mark 125 for the final man on the Hot Shots team. The Tigers need a big spare to win. It's all up to this batter, Timmy Cole, right now. Here's Cole up at the skittle board, lining up, and... No! A tough break! A tough break! Now Timmy has that pesty 357 combination to pick up the spare. Will he play it safe? No, he's going for all three. We'll be back after a closer look at Skittle Bowl. Skittle Bowl is made by Aurora. It's a game of skill that any number can play. Children tend to be remarkably good at it when they can get it away from their parents. Skittle Bowl by Aurora. Come on, a little quiet. Now back to the action. Cole with his final shot, and he's done it! He has done it! The Tigers win the championship! Skittle Bowl, the next best thing to having a bowling alley in your home. You're looking at the Washington Huskies, down by only seven points. They took the opening kickoff 95 yards, then Jim Plunkett came back. And in a matter of seven minutes, there is Plunkett, threw three touchdown passes. Then Sonny Sixkiller came into the ballgame, directed Washington, a 77-yard march. He threw a touchdown pass to Brady. Here they have the ball again at the 39. First down, Washington, Sixkiller. The marker is down. Interception, number 87, Kedzel. So, six colors, first forward pass in this series, intercepted. As Sortan makes the tackle. Let's take a look at it again on the isolated camera. Walter back. Great move by number 87, Katzel. That was the pattern of Stanford defense with three men rushing and five men protecting what we call underneath looking for the short throw but we had a shift penalty naturally declined by Stanford as Cadzo came up with the interception Jim Plunkett goes back to work at the 48 of Washington Lassiter and Vataha to the far side <laughs> And Plunkett gets hit good and hard. Number 84 is Lee, a tremendous fellow. Let's take a look at it again, slow motion. You can see the split screen, Vataha going downfield as Plunkett on the right side of the screen back pedals. Vataha is open, but there is the big rush by Lee. Plunkett almost gets away from it, but is not quite able to. Second down and about 21. Out on the flat to Brown. And Brown rambles. Rambling to the 39 of Washington. Kurt Matter making the stop. The ball could now. just fly. Washington had that to play very well defensed. It was a screen pass, but they were out there. 
He simply used superior speed. There you see Plunkett's record today. Seven out of ten, 111 yards, three touchdowns. Down at the 39, it's going to be a second down and a little more than two. You'll recall there was a previous loss. There's Plunkett. What a job at faking. And look at him throw on the run. The Taha couldn't pull it down. Plunkett going to his left and had to throw 45 yards. Burmeister covering on the play. So that brings up a fourth down as the number one ranked team, Texas, leading Baylor 21 to seven. Number two ranked Notre Dame beating Pittsburgh. Number three ranked Ohio State 24 seven over Wisconsin. And right now, going for it on a fourth down and about two, Plunkett. And it is a first down for the Indians. It goes to Jackie Brown. McMahon makes the tackle. You know, playing before big crowds is nothing new for the young men in today's game. Washington and Stanford are two of the 20 NCAA member football teams that so far this season are averaging more than 53,000 spectators per home game. Anticipated about 70,000 here today as the ball now rests at the 33 with a first and 10 for Stanford as Lassiter and Mataha are to the far side. And the fullback. Gats a good working over by Shepard. Along with uh, number 99, that's Matter again, Kurt Matter, who's a sophomore, 6'8", 215 pounds. Shepard, also a sophomore. Arkansas, 33-14 over Rice. Right now, it's 21-14, and ninth-ranked Auburn will play tonight. Right now, from the 33, it is a second down and 10. Shockley. Pulling away for about a four-yard gain as Matter and McMahon converge on him. 21-14 if you just joined us with about 10 minutes remaining in the first half. An interesting halftime show by the incomparable Stanford Men's Marching Band. Some antics by the card section here in Palo Alto. All in all, we think you'll really enjoy it. Stanford now, 26 plays, 166 yards. At the 30, it's a third down and seven for Plunkett. Beautiful defensive play by number 88, Bob Loveland of Portland. Number 88, the linebacker. And Plunkett leaves the field as the ball is at the 28-yard line, a fourth down and five, bud. So Horowitz, who kicked three field goals against UCLA in that 9-7 win, is 9 of 15 for the three-pointers and he's got a 45-yarder on an angle Steve Murray holding the ball it's long enough but to the near side of the goalpost no good college football what better way to spend an autumn afternoon with timeout the score Stanford 21 Washington 14 last February Chevrolet introduced a new Camaro and it was a hit right from the start for other car makers, that would have been good enough, but not for Chevrolet. We sent a research team out to Chevy dealerships to find out what people thought of the new Camaro and what could be improved. So for 1971, we made the backrests higher on the bucket seats by building in the head restraints. You wanted more security, so we added a cushioned safety steering wheel. Everybody wanted cleaner air. So we made every Camaro engine, even the biggest, run efficiently and with less exhaust emission on the new no-lead or low-lead fuels. And all the things you liked, we didn't touch. And there are a lot of those. So the new Camaro isn't much different from what it was last February. You might say the new Camaro, America's most popular sporty car, is a smashing success and looking forward to a long, long run. Stanford has just missed a 45-yard field goal. It's a touchback for Washington. They have the ball at the 20. Sonny Sixkiller, the quarterback, 
Plunkett for Stanford. We just received word that Mississippi playing Houston, Archie Manning, another great, has injured his left arm. It's in a sling. X-rays will be taken. They don't know the seriousness of the injury. Six killers handoff to Bo Cornell for a loss. And the partisan fans here in Palo Alto liked the work of Larry Butler on defense as the ball comes back to the 15, second and 15, bud. Yale defeating Pennsylvania this afternoon. Harvard leading Princeton in the third quarter. Penn State shutting out Maryland 34 to nothing. Syracuse beating Army 31 to 29 as the cadets put up a good battle. Washington with the ball, 21-14 the score here. Bayard to the near side. Krieg is opposite. Six killer. The trailing man, Cornell, for five yards. McLeod covering on the play. And the official on the near sideline said it's good for only three to the 18, so it'll be third down and 12. Replacing Bayard at split end, we have Ira Hammond, sophomore, 6'2". 190 pounds. Michigan State defeated Purdue 24 to 14. Next week, Ohio State Purdue will be televising that game over most of the same stations from West Lafayette. Six killer at quarterback. And Butler again, the junior from Lakewood, California, number 73. Butler with five tackles. It's fourth down and 12, and it appears that we will have a Washington punt. When we look at great teams, we're often inclined to concentrate so much on the offense. Uh, the four defensive linemen, Sampson, Butler, Lazatich, and Tipton, are the heart and strength of the Stanford defense, one of the best in the country. Galuska, whom we're looking, about to punt. Eric Cross and Randy, Randy Mataha are deep. Marker is down. Cross watching the ball. Stanford. Look, Bo Cornell is 32 and white for Washington. And let's see what the flag will be on the field. A 57 yard punt. Taking that. Where a uh, preliminary report is that there was an extra man on the field for Stanford. And that's not legal, but. <laughs> no, sometimes you'd like to have 12 people, but. <laughs> Well, I do feel that uh, when you're defensing any team, if you have that one extra man, you can drop a pattern that will stop almost anything they do. And it is a procedure penalty. 26 for Washington running along with the referee. That is Cal Jones. Those are the Huskies. Four and three on the year. Procedure against... Stanford declined following a very fine punt. So for Stanford, they have the ball at the 25 with a first down. Plunkett. It was a very effective punt, uh, but it's the time to send a chill up your back if you're coaching because it was low, and had they caught the ball in the air, they would have had ample protection for a long run back. Moore's three receivers, or rather Moore's one of three, split a little to the near side while the Taha and Lassiter opposite. And here is the flanker around, Bataha, and the rabbit started upfield, but it stepped out of bounds at approximately the 20, 27. Ken Lee covering on the play. Oklahoma shutting out Missouri 21 to nothing in the second quarter. First quarter, TCU 15, Texas Tech 7. A final SMU defeating Texas A&M 6 to 3. Now with the ball at the 28, it's second down and seven for Plunkett, number 16, and the Indians, Lassiter to the far side. Here goes Shockley. Well, he was going to go until Kurt Matter stretched that six-foot, eight-inch frame out and caught him. The last play, I think, was a great indication of the coolness as well as the poise of Jim Plunkett, uh, he took a look and saw that his wide receiver Lassiter and Bataha had set themselves up a little closer than he wanted them to. He, like a baseball manager moving the outfield around, he said move out a couple of steps more. Now here's the 30th play for Stanford. We have six minutes and five seconds remaining in the first half. 21-14, they lead. 
Third and five. Going for the first down. Jackie Brown, and it is close. Ron Shepard on the tackle. First down for Stanford. Stanford in the ball game today with an average of 32.4 points per game. Now Plunkett has completed 10 of 14 for 125 yards, three touchdowns, and these are the Pom Pom Girls representing Stanford. Demille Washington, 36, is in the lineup. From the 36, first down. Demille's number is 36. And Jackie Brown. May have gotten a yard before Mark McMahon tripped him up. Right in front of the Husky bench. Here's a good look at six foot three inch Plunkett. St Stanford's two uh, running backs, Brown and Shockley, do not have any definite position to take in the backfield that has any consistency. You'll see them move around to be in the best position for the play being called. 135 yards total offense for Stanford now. Reggie Sanderson, number 32 in the lineup on second and nine. Kurt Matter tipping that forward pass is thrown by a disgusted Jim Plunkett. Plunkett's total offense, I should point out, is 135 yards. Not bad. 21-14 with 526 remaining in the first half. Don't forget music by the Stanford Band. And they are uh, very refreshing coming up with new ideas in university marching bands. Third down. And a good job by the Washington defense. Ron Albrecht got in along with Kurt Matter. Let's look at it again, split screen, slow motion. You can see the wide receiver, Vataha, on the left as Plunkett drops back. Vataha breaks to the inside and starts downfield, breaks out again. He's double covered. Plunkett is rushed and brought down. So now with a fourth down and 12, it'll be the second Stanford punt. And kicking is Steve Murray. We have Cal Jones deep. And a shoe-top tackle on Jones by the man that snapped the ball, John Sandy of Reno, Nevada. 36-yard punt as we have a timeout at Stanford Stadium in Palo Alto. The score, Stanford 21, Washington 14. Hold up, hold up. Continental Insurance Claim Report number 31451. Adjuster on scene, T. Duke. Assignment? to salvage 1,700 cases of frozen pies from overturned refrigeration truck. Action taken, immediate utilization of only available local labor. Background, at approximately 1.30 a.m. on September 23rd, the insured, Chef Pierre Inc., reported accident to Continental's emergency dial a claim service. Local adjuster assigned to case began all night search for substitute refrigeration truck. Time required, five hours. Adjuster then arranged for volunteer work crew from nearby institution. Time required, two hours. Back in the van. Final disposition, approximately 80% of cargo salvaged. Remainder either damaged in original accident or given as payment to work crew. Terrific. I got a parachute. I got this cherry here. I break out with you. 1,200. You're looking at the press box here at uh, Stanford Stadium in Palo Alto. And inside, about 70,000 fans watching unbeaten in Pacific 8 conference play, Stanford hosting the Washington Huskies. It's 21 to 14. Washington with the ball, following a punt at their own 28, first down. Game evening up. Washington led seven to nothing, then Stanford came back to lead 21-7. And then Six Killer marched them and threw a touchdown pass to bring it up to 14. Six Killer trying to hit Bayard on that one. Stanford scored the first three times that they had the ball. However, Washington has stopped them the last three times, which does begin to indicate that the Husky defense is getting some confidence and beginning to analyze the patterns that 
are being used by Stanford a great deal more successfully than they were at the start of the game. Daryl Downey, number 41, is then in the lineup replacing number 28, Joe Bell. Second and 10 from the 28, Sonny Sixkiller. Three of five, passing. Four of six now as he hit the man that just came in, number 41, Downey. Cadzo making the tackle, number 87. After a two-yard gain, it's third down and eight. There you get a look at six killer. He is 5'11", 177 pounds from Ashland, Oregon. Bell is back in, number 28. Cornell is out. Third and eight. 21-14, Stanford leading, 4-28 left, first half. That was Downey picking up two more yards and the Stanford defense stiffening here, bringing up a fourth down and six. It's a rather unusual thing to see a quarterback uh, tall call two screen passes in succession. Right. Now we look at number 40 for Stanford. That's Eric Cross. And punting will be Dick Galuska or Washington. High pass. But a fine punt. Eric Cross at the 35. An immediate tackle on him by Joe Bell. The punt traveled 33 yards. Next Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports, the World Gymnastic Championships from Yugoslavia. Gymnasts from all over the world. You'll also see the always exciting World Figure 8 Stock Car Championships from Islip. Consult your local listing for the time of Wide World in your area. And for you people here on the West Coast, just a reminder, coming up next on Wide World of Sports at 4.30 Pacific Standard Time, the National 500 Stock Car Race from Charlotte, North Carolina, and the National Air Races from Reno. Now from the 35, first down for Stanford. And Plunkett, tackled by Bill Cahill. Fine defensive play, the end and outside linebacker, Matter and Hugot, strung the play out, opening it up for Cahill to come from the inside and pick plunk it off what we'd call the blind side because he was a little bit behind him as he came in. Okay, bud, no gain, second and ten. Lassiter and Demia Washington in the slot to the near side of the field. The delay diagnosed for no gain beautifully. And that was done by Let's watch uh, Fela. He only weighs 205 pounds, number 91, the defensive tackle. Read this play. It looks like he's blocked by the Stanford guard, but he shakes off of Smith's block to make the tackle. A very fine football player, very quick, very fast, but rather small, 205 pounds. Third down and 10 now from the 35. Vataha is flanked to the near side. Lasseter is a split end opposite. It's a different formation. And the pass intended for Moore. Is it good? Yes, it is. As Plunkett now has completed 11 of 16, 137 yards, moving the Indians up to about the 47. Let's watch it again. Moore is the tight end. It's a bootleg pass in the backfield, a fake of the sweep. Moore going off. Plunkett in the ball, hitting him for the first down. First and ten at the 47, Stanford. About two minutes to go, first half. Here's Jackie Brown. And Brown gets near the midfield stripe. Kurt Matter again, and that sophomore is having quite a day. He's from Longview, Washington. And I know the folks in his hometown are proud of him. With a minute and 38 seconds to go in the first half, Stanford's playing a remarkable mechanical game. They have not made a single error thus far. Second and seven now from midfield for Plunkett. Here he is. 
rushed hard on the play on a pass intended for Bataha. I believe, Chris, that he saw that Bataha was well covered and threw that one high enough to be sure that it would go out of bounds. There, there's a good look at Plunkett. Uh, he needs 135 yards for an NCAA career passing record. He also holds the total offense record for the NCAA. Over 7,000 yards. Ken Lee put the rush on him the last time. Now third down and seven. Into the flat. Number 27, Jim Kale, a native of California. Let's see how much he gained. Just two yards to the 48, bringing up a fourth down and five. You'll notice that the defensive, some of the defensive players on Washington have uh, dark helmets on as compared to the gold. It means that they're the defensive stars of earlier games. Little uh, Mary Hernandez, one of the pom-pom girls of the Stanford Indians watching. Steve Murray punting for Stanford. It's up high in the air. Very wise idea. Cal Jones calling for a fair catch following a 31-yard boot. Every Sunday at 12 noon, 11 central time throughout the NCAA football season, on Sundays you'll see exciting filmed highlights of selected Saturday games. Tomorrow, on College Football 1970, You'll see highlights of Washington, Stanford, Houston, Mississippi, LSU, Alabama, Oregon, Air Force, and Pittsburgh, Notre Dame. The ball here at Palo Alto is at the 17-yard line, a sunny six-killer who did not start... College football 1970, you'll see highlights of Washington, Stanford, Houston, Mississippi, LSU, Alabama, Oregon, Air Force, and Pittsburgh, Notre Dame. The ball here at Palo Alto is at the 17-yard line, a sunny six-killer who did not start the ball game, but engineered a touchdown drive for him. He's five of seven, 51 yards. He has Bayard set to the near side. Darrell Downey of Ventura, California, playing for the Washington University team. Carries number 41. Benny Barnes stopping him at around the 30. We have only 31 seconds remaining, and that's the first call timeout by Washington. Stanford has not taken a timeout, so we have had a rapidly moving game from that standpoint. If you ever argued with friends about college football, like who won the 1963 Heisman Trophy or the 1967 Sugar Bowl or any of the 10,000 other facts, you may want the book that can make you a consistent winner in these friendly battles. It's college football's all-time record book, and you can now get a copy for only a dollar as long as the supply lasts. 177 pages, 25,000 facts, oh, lots of information. Until now, college football's all-time record book was sold for $4.95. But if you act fast, you can get it by sending just a buck with your name and address to NCAA, Box 757, Grand Central Station, New York, New York, zip code 10017. That's a buck, one dollar. NCAA, Box 757, Grand Central Station, New York, New York, 10017. Fine book. Washington with the ball at the 30. Well, it, it got there to Jim Creek from Tonawanda, New York. Charles McLeod covering on the play as six killer put it in the air. Let's look at it again on the split screen. Stanford is in a straight-up defense, obviously, with time running out in the half. 
Six killer dropping back as Krieg drives down the field on the right side of the screen. Six killer sets. Krieg timing the pattern is not looking for the ball. Six killer has to move forward. Krieg is still streaking it down the field and not looking back. The timing of the pass now causes him to look back as six killer throws the ball. It's an across the field throw. Krieg reasonably well covered as you will see here but he goes high into the air. And he makes the catch a fine throw by six killer a great reception by Krieg. And it's another first down for the Washington Huskies. We've just received word uh, indicating earlier that Archie Manning of Mississippi had injured his left arm. We've received word that he has fractured his left wrist. All right. Bayard set away from the line as the ball is at the 37 of Stanford with 23 seconds left in the first half. They'd love to tie it up. Downey. Couldn't hold on. Covering is Jim Kaufman. Six killer read the play perfectly. You can see both linebackers shoot. Uh, he was hitting the hot receiver, but he couldn't quite hold the ball. There's a good look at the sophomore. Sonny six killer. Six for nine. And coming into this game, the leading forward passer. Jim Krieg is set to the left. Bayard is right. And he wisely stops the clock by stepping out of bounds. Dave Tipton chasing him out. 15 seconds remaining now. And it'll be a third down. No gain. Third and ten. Stanford has four timeouts. Washington has two left. 87 hurrying in for Washington. That is John Brady who cuts the six killer touchdown pass. Their other score came on a 95 yard opening kickoff return by Krieg. Bayard to the left, Krieg flank to the right. Third and ten. Yes, he caught it in bounds and then went out at the 28. And that made a big difference, Chris. I believe that the yardage they picked up may put them within field goal range. And, of course, as we indicated earlier, they have a kicker that has yet to miss this year. Let's take a look at it again in slow motion. Number 83, Krieg, running the outside corner pattern. He plants his feet, makes the reception with his feet inbounds, and then falls out of bounds. Eight seconds remaining on the clock with a fourth down and one at the 28 of Stanford. And Washington is thinking, do we have time to run one play and then try the field goal, or... <laughs> Can we be positive that if we don't hit the pass, we can do it in less than eight seconds? Well, Bud, your former pupil on the near sideline is talking things over with Sonny Six Killer. I'm speaking of Jim Owens, who was an All-American at Oklahoma in 1950, and uh, co-captain. There he is. You can see the marks on the back of the helmet, little decals of uh, Huskies, the mascot of the University of Washington. Uh, those are awarded for exceptionally fine plays, service above and beyond the call of duty. Eight seconds on the clock here in Palo Alto. We hope you're enjoying the game. After the first quarter, Stanford led 21 to 7, but the Huskies have held them scoreless here in the second quarter and have come up with seven points of their own. Alex Sonny, six killer, going for it on fourth down and one. Did he get it? No good. Intended for Bayard, number 92. So taking over on downs, it'll be Stanford. That's one of the few mechanical errors that we've had in this very finely played game. The call was right, the receiver was open, the ball underthrown slightly. Probably the most important game played last week was the homecoming for the Wichita State Shockers against Cincinnati in Wichita. We have some films of that memorable afternoon, which we'll also show you at halftime, in addition to listening and seeing the great Stanford band. Plunkett giving to his fullback, Shockley, and time should just about be 
expired here in the first half, and it is, and reminding you that it's a great halftime of entertainment coming up. The score at Stanford Stadium in Palo Alto, California, Stanford 21, Washington 14, as we return to our studios for this message. Hi, how are you? Hi. Hello. You never know when you're going to be up close. And because you never know, you need close-up. It's a clear red toothpaste with two whiteners that makes your teeth as white as possible. And it's a mouthwash that makes your breath as fresh as possible. Close-up. It gets your breath close-up fresh and your teeth close-up white. Close-up is for close-ups. Because you never know when you're going to be up close. Decisions, decisions. Do you want a cigarette with good, rich flavor or one that tastes milder? Wait. Now one cigarette gives you both. Pell-Mell Gold 100s. Longer. They give you the good, rich flavor you want. Taste milder. Pell-Mell Gold. Longer yet milder. Pell-Mell Gold. Longer yet milder. Pell-Mell Gold. Menthol too. Stevie Wonder joins Johnny Cash Wednesday night on ABC. Thirty-eight is Stanford's junior fullback, Hillary Shockley, on the last play of the first half, was shaken up and, as you can see, limping toward the dressing room. And that'll be a key to the second half as Stanford, hosting Washington, is leading 21 to 14. The University of Washington, founded in Seattle in 1861, is still young in spirit with dynamic new programs of teaching, research, and public service. With an enrollment of more than 33,000, it's the largest single campus educational institution in the West. It also offers continuing education to thousands of adults annually. Situated on two lakes near the Pacific Ocean and Northwest Forests, the university is ideally located for programs in fisheries and oceanography as well as forestry. As a gateway to the Orient, it also has special interests in Far Eastern studies. At the University of Washington, they're proud of their heritage as a pioneer educational institution and equally proud of their continuing record of academic excellence. And today here in Palo Alto, their football representatives are doing a tremendous job against favored, highly favored, Stanford Indians. And speaking of the Stanford Indians, with the lovely pom-pom girls, here comes the incomparable Leland Stanford Junior University marching band. And they're going to do some things about women's liberation as set to formations and music. And a little later on, the card section will be coming up with some great stunts, too. Now they're going to be uh, forming the stick figure of a walking man, and the music they're playing is Walk Like a Man. All this, an essay on women's liberation. And Bud, uh, I don't know whether you have any early comments on women's liberation or not. The only one I have is that it's for real. <laughs> That drum major is uh, Giordi Lowry. He's terrific. And he's loose right here at Palo Alto. You'll 
see the combined symbols for male and female, seeing them bringing it up to uh, an arrow point at the bottom and while they're playing green-eyed lady. Tom girls include Mary Hernandez, Jeanette Jones, Rini uh, Maharam, Susie Peterson, and Susan Taylor. you'll see the Stanford University marching band noting the cardinal red uniform jackets as they form a light bulb and about to play Hunky Tonk Woman. I guess you can use your imagination what color that light bulb would be if it were glowing. Now the bandsmen say they, they deplore the commercial exploitation of femininity in advertising of movies. For example, spell a dollar sign with the sex symbol and the tune Cracklin' Rosie. Ladies and gentlemen, here at halftime in Stanford Stadium, you're watching their band with their team leading 21 to 14. And a victory today for Stanford means that they would go to the Rose Bowl. They would be the Pacific 8 Conference champions. And right now, because of family planning has helped to liberate the career-minded housewife, this tune, The Love You Save.
musical and formation satire by one of the kingpins of such type of halftime entertaining, the Leland Stanford Junior University marching band right here in Palo Alto. And now with the forming of a witch's head, they're about to play Lucretia McEvil. applause here in Palo Alto for the University Marching Band. This is the Washington Stanford game and it's being brought to you live and in color by Goodyear, the only makers of long wearing polyglass tires. By Continental Insurance, the company that stands behind you and everything you own. By Holiday Inn, when you travel, stay with the world's innkeeper because the Holiday Inn sign stands for the very best or it doesn't stand at all. And by Chevrolet, and Chevrolet dealers who are now featuring Impala as the car of the week on the game of the week. Founded in 1885, Stanford is noted for the beauty of its almost 9,000 acre campus and for its academic attainments. Hoover Tower, red tile roofs, and distinctive sandstone buildings are the Stanford trademarks. Dr. Richard Lyman, a 47-year-old historian and former provost of the university, was named as the seventh president of Stanford just this fall. While Stanford has grown dramatically in terms of buildings and facilities in recent years, due mainly to the loyalty and generosity of more than 90,000 alumni all over the world, the enrollment has remained almost constant at 11,500 students, of whom 6,300 are undergraduates. Stanford attracts its students from all 50 states and more than 80 foreign countries. The faculty is divided among seven separate schools and includes six Nobel Prize winners and 38 members of the American Academy of Sciences. The next time you are in the San Francisco Bay Area, be sure to visit The Farm, a nickname for Stanford University since it once was indeed a farm where Senator Leland Stanford trained prize trotting horses. Thank you very much, Bud. You know, ladies and gentlemen, last month on October 2nd, a horrible tragedy occurred in the mountains of Colorado. Fourteen members of the Wichita State Shockers football team, along with their coach Ben Wilson and the school's athletic director, Bert Katzenmeyer, were killed in a plane crash while traveling to Utah State for their fourth football game of the season. Two weeks ago, after a unanimous vote by the remaining team members and their new coach, Bob Seaman, the Shockers resumed their schedule in Little Rock, Arkansas, against the Arkansas Razorbacks. As expected, they were very much overpowered in that particular game. Then last Saturday at Cessna Stadium in Wichita, they came home. The stadium was filled with students, family, friends, and local townspeople, and they listened to an invocation for their lost compatriots. May we bow our heads in prayer. 
We know you share with us the thrill and excitement of the game. Cheers in this stadium have turned to tears and back again to cheers, and all are a part of life. Our father, our friend, our master coach, because of the beautiful memories we have of those for whom the game has ended, help us who have time on the clock to give an even better effort. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Thousands there. Among them, astronaut Jack Swikert of Apollo 13. I think Apollo 13 and Wichita State University bear similar occurrences. In the tragic fire at Cape Kennedy, which claimed three lives, and those qualities that are in all human beings, which this sport extols, guide the space program to its successes. I know that this same expressions of determination that I've seen in Wichita State University will guide its future also. Then the Shockers, with 43 new freshman teammates, took the field for their memorial homecoming game against the strong University of Cincinnati Bearcats. That's freshman quarterback Tom Owens throwing. And catching the ball was freshman John Lee. A pass interference call on that play and it set up Wichita State's first real scoring threat since the tragic accident. And then freshman John Potts took the opportunity several plays later with a courageous 37-yard field goal. Wichita State was back on the scoreboard, and even though Cincinnati won the ball game 35-5, to it was obvious to everyone that a new spirit had been generated by the combined efforts of the coaches, players, students, faculty, alumni, and friends of Wichita State University. For some reason, people think all airlines are the same. They're not. Several airlines bought 747s, but TWA built the first 747 terminal. TWA was the first airline to give you private customs and immigration facilities most other airlines still share. Only TWA gives you a choice of two movies on every movie flight. At busier airports, we moved our departures to 15 minutes before the hour, so thousands of our passengers beat the crowds every day. For years, the coach passenger has helped pay our bills. We're paying him back with a whole new coach service on TWA ambassador flights. Whether you're flying in the United States or around the world, it pays to spend your money carefully. All airlines are not the same. Here in Palo Alto on the far side, number 40, Eric Cross, along with Reggie Sanderson on the near side, number 32, await the kick by Washington's Ron Volbrecht, and here it is. Stanford leading 21 to 14. This is the start of the second half. The clock moves, and so does Sanderson. Out to the 15, the 20, 25, getting to about the 28-yard line, and so it'll be Jim Plunkett, who has thrown three touchdown passes already today and has guided the Indians up and down the field, and Bud, those are the first half statistics. Stanford leading on all of the statistics, 40 plays to 33, total yards 208 to 156. They've made 37 more yards passing. The most important statistic, 
two interceptions against Washington. No errors on the part of Stanford. Plunkett from San Jose, California. Jack Lasseter at the far side of the field. Bataha on the slot from the 28. First down. Throwing long to Bataha, who couldn't get to it. There was a pass thrown from the 15 and came down at the 40 of Washington. We should point out again that Stanford has changed their pattern of offense for this game by putting Bataha in the slot. This makes it necessary for the inside safety men of Washington to cover Bataha. He seems to have a bit more speed than either of the inside safety men, Cahill and McMahon. Chalkley 38, Brown 33 are the setbacks behind Plunkett. Lassiter 43 and Bataha 18 to the far side. Second and 10 now for Stanford from their own 28. Plunkett. Interception and a beauty by number 11, Bob Burmeister of Evanston, Illinois. So, Washington gets the first opportunity and the first interception on Plunkett today. A pass intended for Moore, and the Huskies will try to move it from the Stanford 34. Let's take a look at it again on the isolated camera. Number 51, Katzman, hitting Moore. And, uh, Plunkett had plenty of time to throw the ball, but did not see Burmeister. Washington with excellent field position. With the ball at the 34-yard line, Sonny Sixkiller keeps it on the ground on the first snap to Bo Cornell. 21-14 is the score. A Washington Husky offensive line out. Bayard, number 92, the split end. The tight end is John Brady, who caught the Sixkiller touchdown pass. Their other scoring came on a 95-yard opening kickoff return at the start of the ball game. Sixkiller quarterback Daryl Downey is the halfback, Cornell is the fullback, and Jim Krieg, the flanker. Second down and six now at about the 30 of Stanford. Great pass to Bell. And Joe Bell appears to be across the 25 where Mike Simone makes the stop. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. Third down and about two. Six killer now has thrown 12 times. He's completed eight for 100 yards and a touchdown. Now it wasn't that much yardage needed as now Washington has the seventh first down of the ball game inside the 25 of Stanford. Just joined us. Jim Krieg returned the opening kickoff 95 yards for a touchdown to put Washington ahead. Then the next three times Stanford had the ball, Plunkett threw touchdown passes. Then Six Killer came in the lineup and marched them 77 yards with a touchdown pass, and that's been the scoring. Joe Bell of San Francisco, a junior college transfer, carried on the play. Satry made the tackle as we look at Jim Plunkett. Washington in their full house T backfield to run the sweep. Once again, the Stanford inside penetration getting to the ball carrier before he could reach the corner. A loss of a yard, second down and 11 at the 25. Ron Cadesel, the linebacker, was shaken up on the play. Dennis Moore, 82, fills in for him on defense for Stanford. Second and 11. <laughs> Beautifully lead pass. Oh, intended for Bayard. That was thrown ever so beautifully. And it looked like one of the knees came up just as he was about to catch the ball and popped it loose. I think that's right, Chris. Uh, he seemed mm. to be in good position. The pass was just a little bit low. Let's look at it in the isolated camera. I guess we don't have it for the moment. We'll try to get it later. Yes, the year of the quarterback in college football. And remember, six killer is a sophomore. Third down and 11. Bayard split left. Krieg flanked right. Both out on pattern. Krieg. Out of bounds, and it's a fourth down and 11. And now pressure may be put on a man who has been perfect. Let's Wisebowski. watch it. Split screen, slow motion, six killer on the left, dropping back. 
Krieg breaking downfield. Six killer sets. Moves up to avoid the rush. Throws. Krieg runs the corner pattern. Makes the catch, but as you'll see, he comes down out of bounds. Wisebowski, who's kicked three of three field goals, 26 of 26 extra points, now with a 42-yard field goal. It's up. And it's first, his first miss of the 1970 season. A 42-yarder, and there he is, Wisebowski of the Huskies. Saturday afternoons in the fall mean colorful college football. Here at ABC with timeout at Stanford Stadium in Palo Alto, the score. Stanford 21, Washington 14. For two years, men have been talking about the long mileage they've been getting on the Goodyear Custom Wide Tread Polyglass Tire. But polyglass means even more than mileage. It means traction and toughness. Traction and toughness. And that's good to know when you think about the woman in your life. That wide polyglass tire holds the road firmly, stands up to punishment mile after mile. When a woman's at the wheel, polyglass means more than mileage. And if it doesn't say Goodyear, it can't be polyglass. A name so different, it's registered. Each team has had the ball once here in the second half. Plunkett on second and ten was intercepted the very first series. And then a 42-yard field goal was missed by Washington. And here's Plunkett again following the miss with a first and ten of the 20. <laughs> There's defensive desire on Jim Kale, number 27. The Plunkett interception was the first error Stanford has made this afternoon. Washington had a great opportunity to take it in. They did have a score had the pass not been dropped. But the score does remain the same, 21-14. If you're watching the screen, you're seeing that the top-ranked teams uh, had little trouble this afternoon in edging out victories. Second and nine now for Plunkett. Short of Bob Moore bringing up a third down and nine. And speaking of top ranked, we have Ohio State on most of these stations next week going against Purdue. The following week, it'll be a doubleheader, Ohio State, Michigan, and at night, except of course on the West Coast, it'll be USC, UCLA. Stanford now has had the ball about 17 and a half minutes. Washington nearly 15 and a half. Stanford in the Cardinal jersey. Third and nine. Lassiter going out. And slipping and falling was Mataha, number 18, and trapping the ball, number 18, sophomore Bill Cahill of Bellevue, Washington. Let's watch it again. Slow motion split screen. Vataha starting downfield. They long yardage situation they're dropping the end off to give him double coverage there he is trying to make the break the turf's a little bit wet from the rain he slips falls down passes naturally over his head almost intercepted by Cahill Steve Murray now back to punt for the Stanford Indians John Sandy will snap the ball Cal Jones is deep along with Cahill fine punt by Murray Cal Jones looking at it at the 36 A 42-yard punt by Murray as Reggie Sanderson helps make the tackle at the 37. Tennessee having a tough time today, winning only 20 to 18 over South Carolina. LSU beat Alabama 14 to 9. That's a final score. And now from the 39. Sunny Six Killer of Washington. Batted away. Number 76, Tipton and Lazatich. We mentioned Ohio State and Purdue next week. And for those of you in the mountain areas, we have an exciting regional game Utah versus Arizona State. 
We've got to feel, Chris, the team that can get the running attack going will pick up a big advantage. Stanford's made 69 yards rushing thus far. Washington only 56. Elmar, number five, is in the lineup. Harmon is opposite. Here's six killer. With three receivers out, John Brady was the target, number 87 in white. So it'll be a third down and 10 for Sonny Six Killer, who has now completed eight of 16, 100 yards, and a touchdown. 21-14 with 11 minutes 40 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Very pleasant afternoon for football, bud, wouldn't you say? For two passing teams, it couldn't be better. There's absolutely no win. The field just a little bit soft. And here it goes to Bo Carnell. And he tried his best to get out there far enough for the first down. Charles McLeod on the tackle at the 47. And for all of you fathers who have students, children here at uh, Stanford, should they win or tie today, they mean that sign, Dad, send money to go to Pasadena. Well, Eric Cross goes deep now as we have a fourth down and about two situation and a punt by Galuska. And that is Cross. Hmm, what a jarring tackle at the seven of Stanford by number 41, Downey, a halfback. 40-yard punt. And uh, six yards uh, net after he caught the ball to make it a total of 46. So Stanford gets the ball now, and Jim Plunkett comes in at quarterback. He'll have to direct the attack now from the seven-yard line, deep in his own territory. On his last four passes, Jim has failed to connect. Jim Kale, number 27 of Eureka, California, a junior, was the ball carrier. And Stanford, of course, recognizing that this is the most important place on the field to make the first down if they have to punt from this close to their own goal line. Washington will have field possession across the 50. A two-yard gain to the nine, second down and eight for Stanford. Lassiter, 43 and 18, Vataha to the far side. Plunkett. And Jackie Brown, 33. Incomplete, third down and eight. Cal Jones covering defensively from his defensive corner position. Florida beating Georgia today. Michigan State beating Purdue 24-14. Northwestern over Minnesota 29-14. Oklahoma beating Missouri 28-13. Third down and about eight. Jack Lassiter from Modesta, California, had gotten free. The pass was long as Plunkett now has thrown 24 times, completing 12, 137 yards, and three touchdowns. Fourth down and eight. And Steve Murray, the punter for the Indians, is in the lineup. John Sandy ready to snap the ball. Cahill and Jones are deep for Washington. Jones at the 45, midfield, a loose ball. But it appears that Washington recovered the fumble. Let's get his uh, number. Number 59 was there alertly. Gordy Gordon, timeout at Stanford Stadium in Palo Alto, where the score is Stanford 21, Washington 14. Every three days, a brand new Holiday Inn opens up. Oh, good morning, girls. You look fine. Ready for a big day? Big opening, huh? Oh, that's there. Okay. Don't forget to check the television every morning to make sure it's working. And above all, courtesy, promptness, and a big smile. And when it does, you can be sure that we're ready to serve you. Please? Mm -hmm. Fine. Everybody ready now? Left. Hey. Forward. Hi. 
who you represent, that uniform stands for something. Dress it up, dress it up now. Come on. This is the biggest day of our lives. And now for that moment we've all been expecting and waiting for patiently. The unveiling. More than 1,200 holiday inns have opened up all around the world. And everyone does more to make you welcome. Because our sign stands for a warm welcome. Or it doesn't stand at all. Thus far in the second half, neither team has been able to move it successfully. In fact, on the exchange of punts, Washington has gained three yards. So now, at the 49 of Stanford, here are the Huskies. Trailing by seven, 9.57 remaining in the third quarter. Bayard to the near side. Sunny six killer. Gives to Houston. And the Stanford defense for a three-yard loss. Before the game, we were talking about what Washington needed to do to have an upset today. First was to protect their own passer. They've done that successfully. Stanford has yet to get to the Washington passer. They need to prevent the long gainer. Stanford's had only four plays of over 15 yards. Also, of course, intercept Plunkett's passes, and they've done that once here in the first second half. Number 21, Houston. Herman Houston comes limping off the field. Cadzo made that last tackle. He has seven for Stanford today. Now for Washington, second and 13. Beautiful try by Jim Krieg, who scored the opening touchdown on the kickoff of 95 yards. Again, just the small, small margins, Chris. He had run a great route. He was open, and the ball was just off target, uh, about 40 yards in the air, and missed by about a foot and a half. Well, Jim Owens has always said that Six Killer had one of the strong arms in the country, and he's proving it here today. Number 26, who left the ball game, had a thigh injury. That was uh, Cal Jones. But he'll be back in the ball game. Six killer interception. Charles McLeod, the sophomore from Houston, Texas. So now both Plunkett and Six Killer have been intercepted once here in the third quarter. Dennis Hurley made the tackle on a third down and 13 play. Let's watch it again. Brady, number 87, is the tight end. He gets off the line of scrimmage clean, breaks to the outside. McLeod times it perfectly, coming across underneath, looking for the long gainer, hit awfully hard, but Stanford has possession. Here's Plunkett. Woo, nearly. Had his head torn off. He's a very durable quarterback. He has uh, survived a knee operation a tumor on the neck operation and as we indicated earlier he is the son of blind parents from San Jose and had to work as a gas station attendant a paper boy a grocery clerk to help make ends meet from the time he was a youngster and he carries a B average as a political science student here at Stanford from the 42 back at the 38 Plunkett finding lots of troubles on a second and 14 as Ken Lee, the senior linebacker, back-to-back -back plays for the Washington defense. As you've mentioned, Chris, the defensive team seemed to be in control here the last 15 or 18 minutes of the game. I think part of that is attributable to the fact that there's been a great deal of rain this week in Palo Alto. The field was a little soft, and it's getting a little bit torn up. We have a third down and 19 from the 33. Stanford, 7.52 left in the third quarter. And there is one of Plunkett's favorite receivers to the 45. A gain of 12, Bob Moore. That'll still bring up a fourth down and seven. Volbrecht and Cahill on the tackle. Moore, the tight end, held up momentarily, cutting across the middle. Plunkett made a bootleg fake. Moore battled for the extra yardage, but was not able to pick up the first down. Moore now with four catches, 54 yards, and Steve Murray in the lineup for Stanford again. Shockley comes limping in to block ahead of the punter. Murray, Jones, and Cahill are deep. Burmeister is back also, and he comes up and gets the ball. 
Burmeister falls forward to the 27 following a 30 yard punt. You may not know how UCLA back Doug Huff feels, but you should know what he thinks. Huff says a football team is sort of uh, like life. It's easy to live with yourself and do what you want, but it's not easy to live in unity and harmony with your fellow man. If you don't learn how to do that, you're never going to enjoy yourself. That was coach Johnny Ralston now, and uh, his team's opponent, the Huskies, are at the 27, first down. And Bo Cornell gets good yardage. Jeff Seaman, who was not expected to play for Stanford's defense, the middle linebacker, made the tackle. There you see uh, number 32, Bo Cornell. He's a senior from Seattle, Washington. His curry was out to the 35. Second down and about one. Defense! Downey for maybe four yards for Washington. Penned down rather convincingly by number 76, Dave Tipton, six feet six, 230 pounds. And it's a first down for Washington. And if Washington can sustain their running attack for another first down or two, it will balance up the defense of Stanford. All right, bud. 92 Bayard left. Krieg to the near side. First and 10 at the 39. Six killer. Cornell trying to advance the ball. 87. Cadesel making the tackle. Ball comes out to the 44. Five-yard gain. They're going to get second down and five. We're in the third quarter, 534 remaining. Stanford leading Washington 21 to 14. And don't forget, a Stanford victory or a tie today would give them the Pacific 8 Conference Championship and the bid to the Rose Bowl. They are left, second and five. <laughs> Beautiful pass by six killer to John Brady. And those two combined for a touchdown in the first half. The pass protection of Washington continues to be amazingly effective. Stanford has a great line rush. They shoot linebackers. I would say about one out of four plays and yet they have not been able to penetrate to the Washington passer. And here is the 50th play from scrimmage for Washington and we're only in the third quarter. From the 45 of Stanford, first down, six killer. Over the hands of Bayard, number 92, covered by 29, Barnes. There's a good look at the young man quarterbacking the Huskies. Full-blooded Cherokee Indian. Hammond has gone to the left, number 90. Second and 10. This is Cornell. And Cornell, for very little gain, a marker is down on the play. Lazatich. And on the tackle. And we have a clipping call against Washington. That's the first... Uh penalty of any consequence in the first half each team was penalized five yards at once Lazatic left the ball game holding his wrist and he'll be replaced by Jody Graves and as a result of the clipping penalty the ball comes back to the 38 yard line and will bring up a second down and 25 Six killer now, 12 of 23, 125 yards. He wears number six on the Washington jersey. That's Brady. End around for some yardage. Cadezel, again helping on the play. So 
with the ball at the 44. Gain of six. It'll bring up a fourth down and 19. Correction, make it third down. As the down was replayed on the clipping penalty. My error. Sorry about that. Total yards for Washington now, 197. As we look at 83, Jim Krieg flanked to the near side. Hammond, number 90, split at the top of your screen. And a marker is down as Ace Bulger, number 85, catches the pass. Let's watch for the, uh, the signal. Interference called against the Stanford defense. And Washington is very much alive with 3.50 remaining in the third quarter and trailing by seven. So let's look at the yardage. It is a first down. And the interference, of course, is the automatic first down. They needed about 19 yards, but the defensive interference call has Washington set up beautifully, but at the 38. And when you get off the hook after a 15-yard penalty and make the first down, it gives you great momentum. All right. At the 38 now of Stanford, Hammond left. Krieg right. Six killer. Dave Tipton, number 76, and that's the first time that Six Killer has been trapped behind the line. He was so confident that his tackle was going to come from the inside and knock Tipton to the outside that he stood right in the pocket. However, the tackle had to pick up a shooting linebacker. And for Tipton, it's his fifth tackle. Now here's the second down and 15. Joe Bell has replaced Downey, number 28. Six killer. Long over Krieg, number 83, covering number 21, McLeod. Bring up a third and 15 now for Washington. Three minutes and three seconds remaining in the third quarter. Stanford 21, Washington 14. You just joined us. Stanford led at the end of the first quarter, 21-7. At halftime, they led 21-14. In fact, the Washington defense now has held uh, Stanford scoreless for almost two periods, bud. They have not, the first three possessions they scored since that time, obviously they have not. Third and 15. Hammond is left. Three, right. Three, six, three. Beautiful. Six killer to Krieg. McLeod making the stop, bud. This is one of the more remarkable plays that we'll see all season. Six killer on the left is rushed very hard. Watch him as he sets up. Krieg is taking the inside break. Six killer sets, sees that he's got no chance as Tipton comes in. He breaks to the outside as Krieg makes his outside break. While moving on the dead run, Six killer throws a perfect strike to Krieg. Coming back for the ball, he turns upfield, and Washington has a first down. All right at the 27 of Stanford now. Creek goes up to Hammond to the right. Oh, Creek, number 83, covered by Barnes. And you talk about a bullet, six killer, really let that one go. The variety of headdress that we find all over the country. Number 21, uh, McLeod, who came out a little, or rather, 21 Houston of Washington, who came out earlier um, as an injured knee and will not come back into the ball game. Second down and 10. ten, ten Six ten, killer, ten, ten, in the air, intended for Hammond, number 90. You can feel the tension mounting, Chris. Uh, Stanford uh, jumping out to what appeared to be a comfortable lead uh, with a remarkable execution of offense. And then Washington coming back and the tension mounting for them as they continue to move the ball. But we must remember that Jim Owens' team is only eight points away from being undefeated in the Pacific Eight Conference, too. Correct. They lost by three points to both California and Southern California. 
All right. Here's a third down and ten for Sonny Six Killer. Krieg, the intended receiver, and what a defensive play by Benny Barnes, the junior from Richmond, California, and it'll be a fourth down and ten. Let's look at it again, dual isolation. Six killer on the left. Krieg on the right. Six killer on a sprint out pass. Moves to the outside. It looks like he has room to run, but he believes that Krieg is going to beat Barnes. Krieg does have a step on him, but the pass did not have enough lead to the outside, and it is broken up by Barnes. Weisbowski tried a 42-yard field goal earlier and missed for the first time this year. This one now, 34 yards plus the 10 of the end zone, a 44-yarder. And it is blocked. And Benny Barnes, number 29, comes up with two defensive plays for Stanford each week. Throughout the fall, watch ABC for college football. With timeout, the score, Stanford 21, Washington 14. The Folster family introduces Chevy's new little car, Vega. Actually, Vega is a family in itself. Hey, Dad, can I take it with Junior next? This is the standard sedan. It comes with bucket seats, front disc brakes, and a highly responsive 140 cubic inch overhead cam engine. The hatchback coupe, a very sporty little car, but also very practical. The whole back end opens up and the back seat folds down. You'll love it. This is the Vega Camback. It's a wagon and then some. Our fourth and final little car is actually a little truck. Vega, the little car that does everything well. Go see it, uh, them, at your Chevrolet dealers. You can see Barnes at the left of the screen using his superior speed to dive in front of the path of the ball to block the field goal attempt for Stanford. Fine play, and you recall he was in the end zone and defended successfully against a six-killer pass. Now for Stanford, first and ten from the 17. 2.34 left in the third quarter. Jackie Brown trying to get away. He loses the ball, and Washington recovers. And again the tension mounts, Chris. <laughs> and Burmeister, who intercepted a pass earlier has now come up with a fumble recovery for Washington. Let's look at it again. It's the sweep play, perfectly defended, and that's the type of tackle that you like to see. Drive your head through the ball. We have to give but a player credit, Katsinas, who put a tremendous jarring tackle. Well, if you drive your shoulder through the ball when it's carried in the arm you get a solid shoulder tackle in addition to putting great pressure on a ball carrier and now the ball is at the 14 yard line Washington in Stanford territory Creek to the near side six killer incomplete intended for Creek or rather Bolger correction there's another correction I'd like to make since I'm a student and a bug on uh, geography in this great country of ours I referred to the Sierra Nevadas earlier, the mountains in the uh, backdrop here. Uh, some fine person corrected me, and they're the Alta Mountain Range. They're also called the Hamilton Range. They're beautiful. So are the Sierra Nevadas, I might add. And this series is the test for the Stanford defense. Okay, second down to ten now. Six killers. When the daylight ran out, he stepped out of bounds. Sumoni. There he is, six killer, yards passing 142, Plunkett 149. And a tremendous Pacific 8 battle right here in Palo Alto. It brings up a third down, and let's see, the official has spotted the ball at the 13. That's a gain of one. Third down and nine for Washington. We have a 
Dual set behind the quarterback six killer. Creek to the right. Oh, an over the shoulder beauty by Creek, number 83. McLeod covering on the play. And the advance is to the nine. This is one of the finest catches that we've seen in this game or all year long. Six killer looking, rushed as Krieg breaks to the outside on a comeback pattern. You can see how hard six killer was rushed. Krieg turns, goes back, and makes a remarkable interception over his inside shoulder. And here are the Huskies going for it on fourth down and four. 21-14, Stanford leading. A minute 33 to go in the third quarter. Six killer, fourth down. There he goes. Beautiful. Sonny Six Killer, a descendant of the first Americans. The Indians really went in. Let's look at it again. Six Killer rolling out to his left, looking downfield. Everyone's covered. The defense is sliding to the top of the screen. He weaves his way through, cuts back. Breaks one more time and drives into the end zone for the score. What a football game. And now they go for two to take the lead. It's 21-20, Stanford going for two, six killer. It is good. Ace Belger and Sonny, six killer. Well, I'll tell you, he's... Uh, a great advertisement for the first Americans, but uh, we've all known how tremendous they've been over the years, and oh, this is a tremendous athlete. Let's look at it again. He sets up the throw. Everyone is covered. He moves to the outside. Can't quite turn the corner. It looks like he's almost throwing the ball away. He hangs it up in the air, and we get a sensational catch. Well, of course, the first great Indian uh, to play football was Jim Thorpe, bud. Well, Exodyne, all of those Carlisle Indians were great. That's right. Chris, the thing that Washington needs to look out for now when there's still 16 and a half minutes roughly to play and you've come back from a two-point, two-touchdown deficit, you can be cheerleading when you ought to be playing, and that's what they need to watch. Ron Bobrecht, after that eight-point job you just saw, beautifully done. Here's the kick to the Stanford Indians. Back deep we have Eric Cross, number 40, at the 4. Coming out to the 10, the 15. The partisan fans want more yardage. But the fired-up Huskies throw him at about the 15. We'll see where the ball is spotted. The kicker was the first one there on Cross at the 14-yard line. Stanford this quarter with a minute 17 to go, four net yards. And that's a tremendous tribute, obviously, to the tenacity and also the accuracy of the play of the Washington defense during the third quarter. And now from the 14, Jim Plunkett, number 16, has Lassiter to the near side, the Taha to the right. And a determined effort by Jackie Brown, a junior from Yakima, Washington. McMahon on the tackle. Ball has come out to the 19. There you see it. Washington taking the lead for the first time with a two-point conversion. 22-21. And for Stanford, it's a second down and five. Bataha to this side. Lassiter opposite. Moore, a tight end. <laughs> Look out. And the Northern California moisture making the field a little uh, slippery. Down Stanford has gone back to their basic pattern of offense. Bataha has been in the slot. He's now as a wide receiver. You can see him on the left of the screen dropping back. The linebackers rushed for Washington. Taha broke to the outside. The field slightly gooey. He avoided the corner man. And then he too slipped. 
And now from the 40, it's a first down for Stanford. They're in their own territory, trailing by a point. 16 seconds remaining in the third quarter. And Jim Kale is dropped for a loss by number 91, Fela and Gordy Gwynn. At the end of the third quarter here at Stanford Stadium in Palo Alto, the score, Washington 22, Stanford 21. We're looking at the University of Washington cheerleaders and directly behind part of their great band that have come down here, their director, William uh, Bissell. And there are the folks. And they're making a lot of noise for their Huskies who are leading 22-21. Here's Stanford with a second down and 16 at their own 34. Jim Plunkett, three receivers out, including Moore. But the pass goes to Demia Washington. He did a great job at bringing that one down as Katsinas from Oaklawn, Illinois, made the tackle. The stats, Washington has moved ahead as they have on the scoreboard. 60 plays to 55, three more yards, 233 to 230, but the key of the third quarter, one stand for an interception, one stand for fumble, their first errors of the game. Despite that great completion, Stanford has a third down and six. The play covered ten yards. Here's Plunkett. Vataha. Vataha was inbounds, and it's a Stanford first down. Perfect timing on the play. Vataha on the right of the screen. Jim Plunkett on the left, dropping back. Straight drop back pattern, excellent protection. Plunkett turns and throws as Vataha makes the outside break. He reaches high for the ball, comes down with his foot inbounds for the reception. Plunkett now 16 of 28, 195 yards, three touchdowns from the 42 of Washington, first down. Kale in at fullback because of uh, Shockley limping earlier in the ball game is hit hard by Ken Lee. Look at the size of these boys from the Northwest. Going back to the two-point conversion again, you have to say that mm. they came to win, not to get a tie. A very courageous call. And now, uh, loss of the yard. It's second down and 11 from the 43. Stanford with the ball, trailing by one. We're in the final quarter. 13:44 to go. Plunkett. Everybody's covered. And throwing long, intercepted by Mark McMahon, number 12. Lassiter is 83 in the red jersey, 86 is Moore. And so Plunkett, that was a big gamble. He had to throw it long in a crowd. It was third down and six. Uh, if they had a punt, they probably won't have this good field position. Let's watch Lassiter again from his wide position going downfield. He's covered very, very well. He breaks to the outside. Plunkett is running for his life. Throws the long ball here. And we have everyone in the act in a hard, hard collision. McMahon holding the ball. And now the referee, Walter Ordoni, Odoni rather, is uh, marking off a penalty against Stanford. And it uh, could be a face mask penalty uh, against the Stanford Indians. So for Washington, that brings them uh, out of the deep hole with the ball on the 17 instead. So a personal foul, face mask. And six killer. Goes right to work with Bo Cornell, the number one rusher for the Huskies, moving it across the 20. You just joined us. Sonny Sixkiller, following a fumble recovery by his teammate Burmeister. In four plays, fourth and four, he scored and then went for two, as you see the face mask penalty right there. That's usually a very inadvertent thing. You're scrambling for the 
ball carrier to make the tackle and your hand just automatically happens to catch that face guard. Second and four now for Washington from the 23. Cornell on the carry. The end of the first quarter, Stanford led 21-7. At halftime, they led 21-14. That last play was a bigger play than I think uh, you may realize. They had second down and four. If they can pick up two or three yards on the play, which you normally expect to do, you're almost assured of the first down. Two more minutes of ball possession on the clock. Third down and four now for Washington. Washington scoring their touchdown and went for two successfully at 124 of the third period. That's Al Maurer, number five, a senior from Seattle. And Sonny Sixkiller moves the Huskies forward for the first down at his own 34. 41 down, he comes back in. Along with Ace Bolger, number 85. 14 of 30. He threw a touchdown pass and he scored one from nine yards. And he's only a first-year varsity man. Two, two, 85. Downey. Daryl Downey with Ernie Janet making a fine block from his left guard position. And they come out to about the 44. Janet's block was one of the hardest to make in football. You have a shooting linebacker as you're moving laterally to be able to time it and then be able to see it. Great execution. We've had a total of 123 plays already in this football game. Now it's a second down and three. The ball is actually at the 41 of Washington. Power to the far side. And driving for the first down, Bo Cornell. Did he make it? He did. 11-22 remaining in the game. Remember, a tie or a victory by Stanford would mean a trip to the Rose Bowl. Right now, Washington leading, 22-21. Cornell, who got the first down, has had 12 carries for 41 yards today. The ball is uh, at approximately the 49 of Washington. Power to the far side. Bayard split to the near side. Downey. And the ground game working very fine against the Stanford defense. Wayne Sartoon blocking. And now at the 44 of Stanford. It's a second down and three. And two tight ends coming into the game for more blocking. Total yards. Washington with 271. Stanford 254. Number six, six killer. <laughs> Three men out. Bo Cornell filtering out from his fullback position. First down. Cadezel making the tackle. 85 back in Bulger. He and John All Brady right. are alternating at the tight end position. With the ball at the 40, it's a first and 10. 22-21, Washington leading with 10 minutes, 20 seconds left in the game. Stanford has won this game against Washington the last three years. Downey to the 38 for two. Here's Downey, number 41. 85 is Bulger. Seaman and Simone, two linebackers, making the tackle, bringing up a second and eight. Let's look at Seaman, the great middle linebacker, outside linebacker, pardon me, moving in, making that jarring, hard tackle, not letting the ball carrier fall forward for extra yardage. That's his sixth tackle. Bell number 28 is in at fullback, replacing Cornell. Second and eight, six killer to Downey. Jim Kaufman covering Downey on the play. Let's see where he stepped out of bounds. That was a very clear picture of uh, hitting the hot receiver. You could see the three Stanford linebackers rushing. Six-killer having presence of mind enough to read the defense perfectly and 
hit the swinging back as the linebacker who normally would cover him rushed. And as we look at uh, the Washington band, it's third and three for their team at the Stanford. 38, 928 left in the game. Third and three. <laughs> Deflected. Number 91, Greg Sampson. Six feet five, reached up and deflected the six killer pass. Sonny now, Alex Sonny, six killer, has completed 16 of 33 for 163 yards. And what an afternoon he's having. Throwing a touchdown pass, scoring one himself, throwing a two point conversion. And now on fourth down, and three, they are going for it. Krieg to the far side. Six killer looking. Into the flat, oh, just over the head of Joe Bell. And on downs, Stanford takes over. There's Bell number 28. Timeout at Stanford Stadium in Palo Alto and a thriller. The score, Washington 22, Stanford 21. Your company may be feeding its computer a diet of stale data and not even know it. A Bell System communications consultant talks about how your business can avoid that problem. When your company sends information to a computer by mail, it probably takes a few days getting there. That can be a real problem when your company depends on its computer for the latest, most current data. But data phone service helps speed information to a computer in seconds instead of days over regular telephone lines. So market results, production schedules, and warehouse orders get to where they need to go fast. Data phone service helps make sure the facts a computer receives today aren't the facts it should have gotten last week. The American Telephone and Telegraph Company and your local Bell Company keep finding new ways to serve business better. One way is to help keep your company's computer on a diet of current facts. And one of the most exciting games of any college year here at Palo Alto, California, Stanford Stadium. The Indians have held on downs. They trail by one, and they have a first and ten now at their own 33 with 921 remaining in the game. Jim Plunkett now goes against the best pass defense in the Big 8 Conference, the Washington Huskies. And that's little rabbit Mataha. Mark McMahon covering on the play. There he is, number 18. Let's watch the beautiful timing between Plunkett and Bataha. Plunkett on the left, dropping back. Bataha running an out pattern. Plunkett throwing the ball before Bataha looked for the ball and hitting it right on target. Bataha slips, catches himself with his left hand. Almost broke it all away. Plunkett now with 212 yards passing. First and 10 near midfield. And Eric Cross coming around. Sidelining it into Washington territory. Eric Cross, number 40. And the advance is to the 32, a gain of 12 yards, another Stanford first down. 9.05, left in the ball game. Washington leading 22 to 21, and it's far from over. Make that an 18-yard play. The ball is at the 32 of Washington. Let's see how that is ruled. Bob Moore, number 86. Ruled a completion and then a fumble and a recovery. And I think all by the same man. <laughs> boy, oh boy. All right. From the 32, it went to approximately Let's look at it 15. again on the isolated camera. Moore being held up along the line of scrimmage, but weaving his way out. Plunkett hitting him on the numbers. Ball fumbled, but Moore making the recovery. From the 15 now of Washington, first down, 8.45 left in the game. Washington to the near side. Jim Kale, the junior fullback. And in on the play. Number 84, Ken Lee, and number 37, Ron Shepard. 
the Washington Huskies, who this year have defeated Michigan State, Navy, Oregon State, and Oregon, defending now against Jim Plunkett and the Indians. We have a second down and eight at the 13. Loss on the play. Jackie Brown, number 33, carrying, and Ron Shepard. Remember, he's a sophomore middle linebacker, and Kurt Matter, another sophomore, 99. And I believe that uh, Stanford is recognizing very well that they do not want to have a pass intercepted because they're in perfect field pole position, and Horowitz is one of the fine field goal kickers in the country. But now it's a third down and nine at the 14. Plunkett at quarterback. Touchdown, Mataha. Watch it again. Plunkett really threads the needle on this one. Mataha has been making the outside break. This time he weaves inside, then outside, and plants his foot and comes back across the middle. A new pattern. Plunkett. Going perfectly, Vataha falls into the end zone to put Stanford in the lead. And Jim Plunkett has thrown his fourth touchdown pass, and now Stanford is going for two. Here's Plunkett, and they get their two. Jackie Brown, number 33, and what a display of quarterbacking today. Both teams, but it's been remarkable. All started in 1869. Now each week it's college football on ABC. The score, Stanford 29, Washington 22. You cut yourself like that before the big dive. Tomorrow you'll draw sharks. Sharks? Use Edge Protective Shave. I use this. Call that protective? Edge is a gel. This gel lubricates better than that foam. You get a smooth shave? Yeah. And I hardly cut myself anymore. It's that lubrication, I guess. No nicks and no cuts. And no sharks. Edge Protective Shave. We're going to drive home a point about anti-leak Xerox antifreeze. It stops most common radiator leaks just like that. We guarantee it will stop and prevent leaks in your car radiator for a full year or just write DuPont and get your money back. Anti-leak Xerox antifreeze is guaranteed not to run out on you. Jim Plunk, a beautiful strategy. He's 63 yards, a uh, touchdown, and went for two, and now it's 29-22, bud. And I don't think we should forget the great play of the Stanford defense. Washington had third and three on the Stanford 33. The defense dug in and got the ball for Plunkett in the offensive unit. Plunkett now with four touchdown passes. Six killer with one in the air. Scored one himself. Threw for two. Daryl Downey is deep for the Huskies. Along with Jim Krieg. Krieg who returned the opening kickoff 95 yards for the first touchdown. As Steve Horowitz's kick goes out of bounds, it'll be re-kicked from the 35, a five-yard penalty. Let's, let's see that two-point play again. Plunkett. Faking, rolling, throwing very quickly. And his receiver wide open on the goal line. And we have two points. Brown making the reception. An exciting first half. A uh, much slower third quarter. And near the end of it, six killer and the Huskies came alive. And here in the fourth quarter... Stanford has bounced back to regain the lead. And remember, a victory today will give them the conference championship and a trip to the Rose Bowl. But here's Jim Krieg waiting the kick by Horowitz. Sort of like the eye of a hurricane. We had a great start. Calm, and then here we go. All right. It's Krieg at his own 10, now to the 15, the 20. Gets away. Goes laterally, the 25, the 30, the 35. Look out. He is super. Beautiful. Jim Creek coming into the ball game, averaging more than 29 yards on kickoffs. 
Brown went back 95 at the start of the game, and here he's come from the 10 to the 42 of Stanford. Watch how well he reads his blocks and how he times his moves. Turning on the speed, then breaking again to the outside. And now watch him accelerate. His legs reaching for extra yardage. He cuts back. And is finally brought down. 48 yards, but Mike Ewing in the lineup is six killer from the Stanford 42. Gives a handoff to Bo Cornell. Our local stations have an opportunity now to identify themselves. A six yard gain here at Stanford Stadium and is it alive? One of the Stanford pom pom gals. It's now second down and four for the Washington Huskies who have come from behind 21 to 7 to take the lead 22 to 21. But Stanford, 63 yards and six plays. Plunkett going for six and then got the extra two to lead 29 to 22. Here's six killer. Barnell. And he is pretty close to the Washington first down. Seaman made the stop with that much time left. 6.23 in the ball game. And the field, as you can see, is just wet enough that the man who has the initiative making the moves usually can break away as the man coming up to react does not have a chance for normal balance. Now a measurement. For the Washington Huskies, six killers, 17 of 35, 167 yards. Today, Plunkett, 19 of 32, 244 yards. Each team has their four timeouts left in the ball game. But I'm going to be pretty limp after this game. It's it's been a, an exciting one. Well, I'm thinking of what's going through the minds of the Stanford players. They Determined to go to the Rose Bowl. If they can tie or win this afternoon. They've got it wrapped up and they're getting as much pressure as it's possible to imagine. All right, third down and less than a yard at about the 32 of Stanford. Sonny Six Killer, the sophomore. What a tremendous young football player. Down in Cornell, set behind him. Going for the first down is Cornell. Watch the official in the white cap, the referee. Time out here as we have a, a measurement, and it's awfully close. Larry Butler making the tackle. Butler making his seventh tackle of the ball game. And here's the measurement. First down, Washington. There's a good look at the sophomore quarterback coming into the ball game, the nation's leading passer. And he's made us believers, but certainly has.